No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. We are back. My man Court has a fucking dashiki on. We weren't supposed to mention it. We weren't? Nah. Why not? Because it's supposed to just be there. You wear the loudest possible shirt and we're supposed to just ignore it and act like it's not happening? June 10th, not Juneteenth. Mm. Nah, it's, it's June 14th, 14th right was, now, yeah, right? It was June 10th. You're all the way. It's it, like the 19th. <laughs> but, but then we also got China Mac with us. And on top of that, did you see that there was a crazy ass shooting in Lamar Park uh, yesterday, like during the event that they were doing for Juneteenth? That's so, crazy. yeah, they say that. But like, it was all good. It was all good. The people start getting robbed. The young dude start beating people up. They went inside of McDonald's. They snatched the cash register out of McDonald's. Yeah, I seen that they video. Did, yeah, they did. They did it up yesterday. Yeah, that's crazy. Damn. I was supposed to go there. Park. Lupe was inviting me over there. And I you, was like, you would like, I don't think it happened to the main crowd. You would have been with, with, with B Face and all them. You would have been with uh, Anita Armand and all them. You yeah, yeah, been, yeah, yeah. But so you're saying that it happened amongst random ass people, not like, like in the, the performers crowd. or anything? Like, yeah, yeah, the performers. And I said Lamar Park was the safest part of LA. Who told you that? Who told you that? Hancock Park or Lamar Park? You got to work on your info. Lamar Park. You talking about, are you talking about, no, that's like, they said that's where all the Muslims be. Nah, that don't mean it's that's safe. That's why you put that on today? You was about to go over there? <laughs> nah, I put it don't mean it's safe. That's, that's the, <laughs> like, that historical black area. Like, all the people that 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 believe in all... You, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, the, 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 the pro-black, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Drummers and... Yeah, I just heard about it from and Dom shit. Kennedy and, and, like, never really heard anybody act like it was a nice place or, like, nah. it was a safe place. But the park is, like, they don't play that black gangbang shit. At the park. Really? You don't oh. gangbang at Lamar Park. You don't go up there. All it is is for the culture. You get what I'm saying? Like, the area of Lamar Park, like, the whole district, yeah, because it, it ties into the 60s and the 40s. It's, like, right in between. Okay. But they keep the park, uh, you know, off limits from any going on? Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm They tried to. I mean, it probably been a couple people. But, like, where it's stationed at, mm. there's supposed to be way more depths right there. Okay. It sits right off of Crenshaw Boulevard. I've seen, like, a hundred people sitting on a, a KFC or a Wingstop or something. Like, they they went on the roof and the were just, like, street straight shit. lining up the whole fucking thing. I think it's Wing Street, the little Pizza Hut. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Pizza yeah. Hut Wing Street. That's yeah. the, the Pizza <laughs> Hut Wing <laughs> brand. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, yeah, that's is it Wing Street? So, what, what is that? Yo, they wings is so wet. Really? <laughs> yeah. Now you've seen it like a million dude. times though. It's like whenever you see a Pizza Hut, they got like a Wing, like a wing Street, street as part of it. It says Wing Street on there. Yeah, you never eat the. Shit. Everybody teaming up now because whenever you see like a fat burger, they'll also have like uh, a Buffalo wing. Wings. Like, buffalo Wings is not wild. Wings. It's not Buffalo, buffalo Wild Wings. Every time I see it, I kind of think that like so that's not those buffalo wings are actually fire. Really. They're cool if you get them fried right, cause I was and I got them from like Barstow. I was on the way to Vegas. I'm like, man, matter of fact, let me get my Barstow burger. Let me get a good. six piece wing too. Like, I'm gonna try it. I know? knew the whole game had changed as soon as I started to see like a KFC combination Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Yeah, like, it always OG, had to have something wrapped up in it. Right yeah. there. <laughs> that's the OG collab. Right that's there. Owned by Pepsi. I don't know why I know this. What? But the KFC Taco Bell. What? Just every single one is owned by Pepsi. Yeah. They all serve Pepsi drinks. That explains those drinks. nasty ass beverages. Yeah. Well, are they just sponsored <laughs> with the drink, or do they own it? Pepsi owns them. You've been right lately, so I'm not. <laughs> He's been right. Like, I've been trying to call him out on bull. He's just been right. So it's like, I've been stop. I stopped the bull. What's going on with the mouse? I need to be able to use the mouse. Oh yeah. Oh, it's it's an up thing, not a left thing. Oh okay okay. I gotta see if this is if this checks out. You guys can keep talking. Yeah, while I, man. Oh, my keyboard is. <laughs> so I mean, on. you know, since since Adam looking it up, what we what let's start with, with with China, Mike. What you do this weekend, gang? Oh man, what I do this weekend, man? Um, I was shooting some stuff with Crip Mac. Oh yeah, what you guys doing? Oh, we doing um, we doing a pilot and um. Like a Robin Big type of show. Oh, that's so I've been shooting a pilot with him. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? We I see to, I see yeah, it was on the piano. Was that yeah, this he week? was on the piano, had a uh um went to the farm. Yeah, I see you know that. What I, mean? I seen that. You know, whale watching and stuff like that. Yeah. Different things. You had him whale watching? Yeah. What kind of response was he giving to the whales? You gotta see it. You man. never seen anything like that before? He was flipping out. Yeah, he's flipping out. Wow, we Canoculars got cubs. Canoculars. <laughs> That's what he was calling them, the canoculars. Yo, yesterday yeah. he blew my mind. He was like, yo, man, um, I'm trying to get in a ring and do a coxswain fight. I was like, <laughs> Oh, that's 
That was crazy. Yeah. Oh, you should have paused them. You should have paused them. I definitely paused. Uh, when the cripping is more important than the potential uh, pausing, that says a lot crazy. about how important it is. Cox. Hey, but look at this. <laughs> PepsiCo in 1997 spun off its restaurant division into a separate company called Tricon Global Restaurants, and Tricon became the parent company to KFC, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. <laughs> Those are probably the shisey motherfuckers who decided that they needed to start cramming two, three different restaurants into yeah, one business. Yeah, for sure, because they got Pizza Hut, Wig Street, fucking KFC, oh, yeah. and Taco Sale. If we, oh, yeah, look, the Habit. <laughs> they got the Habit, too. They got A&W. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, you know if know this that? is just Long like... Long John Silver's, yeah. too? Long John Silver's? I haven't seen crazy. one of them in a while. They still in? I just seen one in Texas. Long John in Brooklyn. Yeah, they got to be over in Texas. Texas. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It yeah. sounds like some shit that means. Nah, but Long John Silver's is in the hood, generally speaking, Always. right? Yeah. yeah, Captain D's, Long John Silver's. That's, the, that's Long John's beef, Captain D's. <laughs> Next really next bad. winter, I'm definitely going to cop some Long John's and just rock them. Unrelated. It doesn't have anything to do with Long John Silver's. But I always like wish that I had more like thermals during the winter, but then Jim I forget Jones to buy them. Rock yeah, I went, I, went Supreme, mm. I went Supreme thermals all winter this winter. Sorry, yeah. thermals. Yeah. Pants too? Must yeah. be nice. Yeah. Rich guy. Yeah, nah, they're, you rich guy. Guy. <laughs> they're Hanes. They're, they're Hanes. Uh, they sell a regular ones You know ones how they got the Walmart. white tees? With a Supreme logo on it? It's yeah, Hanes just though? a little boat. And I room. never like wearing the pants bad. long johns. The bottom long Me johns, that's not my thing. That felt like you know? leggings. Yeah. Well, you got to wear something over it because if people can see your legs being used crammed to that in. that cold shit. Yeah, really. I mean, but like, it kind of looks dope if you got the shoes to match the it ripped jeans with the thermo going through and the shoes match yeah, the, yeah. the But thermo. you see a lot of people rocking like tights with like basketball shorts over it. You know, yeah, or yeah. it's like a fashion kid thing, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the Nike tights are pretty. Uh, uh. I don't like. I've been seeing that lately. Tights. One legged. You want to see it? No. Like, where does the leg on the other one stop? At like panty length. Panty. So you're saying it's like a speedo on one half, and then the other half is like a full pair of pants. Angel what? Reese be wearing them. Some nigga in the NCAA be wearing it too. I seen Desto that's, Dub hanging out with Angel Reese. That's for uh. What's that for? Muscle compression. Is it? Yeah, right. Yeah, what that leg is messed up, so they got one leg. Uh, I doubt that it stops. I've uh, been watching this reality I show about those. golf, and I noticed that like a lot of those dudes are rocking like the muscle compression type shirts that you see people in the NBA and everything the wearing. Armor joints. Yeah, that took over everything. Yeah. Right. Golf had its whole aesthetic ruined by all this like athletic wear. Yeah. Cause it's like it's supposed to be like an old white man dressing. Yeah, yeah, yeah but then yeah, the yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the sponsors too is they just have like disgusting, massive fucking patches all over their shirts and stuff. Now? And I'm just not really feeling it. Yeah, in turn, uh, I don't know why I've been watching this. It reality. turns into a race car. There's thing. a reality series on Netflix about golf, and then there's one about the Tour de France, the fucking long distance bike riding shit. And for some reason, I just been knee deep watching both of those all weekend. Bro, I was on uh, Investigation Discovery ID. It's this girl named Gracie. Did you guys see that shit? Gracie Jane. Oh, you watched she that. She a bad one. You watched that. No, I think we're talking about different <laughs> no, ones. No, 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 no. Oh yeah, I was about to say her nah, name's like Grace. Damn. Her, it's like a little girl. Not that one. Yeah, uh, he knows what I'm yeah, talking about. I don't about. know who that is. But it's like I watched that shit. It was like a little you girl. You didn't get enough, huh? <laughs> well, you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trolling him right now. You are gonna find out in the comments. <laughs> oh, shit. oh, it has to be a, a train train. Hey, <laughs> I already know now. <laughs> Look, he know. He could tell by the way yeah, I was laughing for sure. But no, the girl played like a six years old, six year old because she had like a muscle. Like a little, uh, she was disabled, so she was like a little person. Mm -hmm. So she played like she was six years old. She came from another country. They alter. They say in the in the adoption world that sometimes they shave a couple years off of the kid's age. Oh, it's just like it rap. More, yeah. And people say they're it, sixteen yeah. when they're nineteen or whatever, yeah. just to make the yeah. career last longer. Yeah, for <laughs> sure, right? Porn girls do that too. Wow. Yeah, because I there's been multiple times where I've been looking at Twitter. I see a girl. I'll say to my girl, can you believe this girl's 19? She'll go, I've been seeing that girl for like five years. Like yeah, She's like she mid-20s, but 27. she's still acting like yeah, she's 19. Yeah. Crazy. Just to get the news to, yeah. So, but she got with a family and was trying to kill him like for her insurance. Probably. She was really 22 years old. They said she was six years old. So they took her to I would have killed that little bitch. I think Bro, I could tell the difference would, between a six year old and a twenty two no, year old. But you can't. Oh, because she's fucking. She's yeah, so yeah. small, but they're like the facial features were off. 
And she then got the, the house boom. The first day that they took her, the first day that they took her in, they like, oh, let's get her showered up. She's six. They take her upstairs to take a shower. She has fucking pubic hairs. Oh what? shit. And then like a couple of weeks later, she has a period. This the movie. This the one you in? What movie no, is no, this? No, no, no. This not a movie. This is a real life oh, thing wait, on ID. On, on ID? the ID channel. Really? Her I name's like ID. Grace something. I gotta dig in. Yeah, you got to. You got to. This shit's crazy. I, I I was watching that shit like it's like two hours long. I watched it last night. It was crazy. Wow. She she was crazy. She was trying to like she pushed her mom into like at you know how they got the electric fence for the cows. Uh huh. They she pushed her mom into the fence like at the fucking they went to like some farm or something and she played like she was hurt by the fence. And when she got over there, she tried to throw her. But into did the, the fence, fence kill her? No. No, it just fucked she her up. Just, yeah. Okay, yeah, because, all right, when I took my girl on her birthday, I took her, we were in uh, Mallorca, Spain, and I took her horseback riding, right? Yeah. And it's crazy how casual everything is that they just are not worried about, like, rules and precautions the way that anybody in America would be. Because when we're walking through the field, she just says, like, oh, yeah, watch out, this electric fence. And we're, like, super close to it. Like, I, I, I would have totally grabbed it. And I'm just like, yo, that's crazy as fuck that you barely warned me about the electric fence. And then the horse, I'm, like, walking the horse, and the horse fully steps on my foot and is standing on my foot for, like, 10 seconds. I'm screaming and damn near crying and pain. I can't move can't at put, all. Yeah, I just have to wait. pain is, like, I have up. to wait until the horse decides that he wants to move, and then she's just like laughing at me, like the chick who runs the farm, because there's no fucking lawsuits Did out there. Did you sign there. something? They I don't made, think I even signed. So, I just think they don't sue each so other out the there. The crazy oh. part is, the crazy part is, they were at the farm and they made her sign the shit. Wow, I should have put D and D on. Um, they made her sign the fucking uh, waiver. They made everybody f sign the waiver about that fence. Mm. So when she found out, they said her face lit up. Mind you, she she already been standing over the bed with a knife. Like she, and she, every time they asked what she does, she put like pine salt in in the coffee before. Like every time they asked her why she does, she's like I'm trying to kill you, bitch. Oh mm. shit! And she was screaming to the police, but they were. Seeing a six year old say that, like, like when the police came out to the farm, because they called the police in the ambulance, they like, I was trying to kill that bitch. So, what is this called on the ID channel? It's uh, go how, how investigation six, how discovery. Two year old pass for a six year old. Well, well she's got like a midget Gracie thing Jane. going on. <laughs> you're just, you probably think about Gracie Jane a good percentage of the time anyway. Um, all right, so I, I did want to acknowledge something, uh, which is that, all right, so we went in on lush to a certain extent last week yeah. and then i was fully expecting him to just jump out the window and be saying god knows what because yo we premiered the shit at six and he was on live by like it was like a over two hour podcast and he was online like by 7 30 yeah. already on live reacting Shane, to it or whatever what? but yeah well because laura didn't set it for a premiere she just scheduled yeah. it so it just went live so people yeah. were able to skip through it which normally we premiere it so yeah. he was able to fucking speed run that shit but yeah. He put out a video basically like apologizing and he also like texted me and stuff, which I, I don't think I responded to, but basically just saying that he wasn't going to be talking shit anymore or that he like, I don't know, feels bad about whatever. Like, I, shout out, part shout of me out, feels like he might have had a gun two, to his head. No, shout out to two B's. What's that? Brick baby. Oh, what? You talked to him or you think yeah. you just scared him? I hollered that guy. After the well, episode came out? Nah, before the episode. What was that out. like? What was that combo I like? I told him, like, just, you know what I'm saying, move on with your life. Keep everybody up <laughs> oh, here. Oh, shit. Your, your shit. <laughs> I was wondering if there was somebody with a shotgun aimed at his head while he was doing that video because he looked, it looked a little <laughs> bit hostage -y. I don't know. But, I mean, I never had, like, an intention on coming on here and talking shit about Lush in the first place. Um, I was really just reacting to some shit, some conspiracy theories, really, that he was putting out there, basically claiming that I gassed up China Mac and Rockstar to go at him. So that was the only reason why that even became like a conversation. So I'm perfectly happy to not talk about him and let him go do his thing or whatever. Yeah, I that's like, I was like, I just, so basically what happened was uh, he hit me. He was like, bro, I was supporting you. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was doing that. I'm like, hey, all that don't matter. My loyalty is strong. So it's like, even if you, because you keep hinting around like, oh, fuck those people up there, or not those people, you're, but you're saying everything you can just so you don't diss certain people so we will not be on your ass. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And I'm like, bro, I get, I, I feel the energy, so I just responded because I'm tired of it. You get what I'm saying? Like, 
Stop crying about that shit. That shit make you look weak. Like, if you got potential in this podcast game, just run your shit. You don't see AD and Trail and Gina or nobody and crying Rory every Maul. day. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? You don't see them crying every day. They working, doing what they got to do. Like, if you feel like you have potential to be somebody, why are you still blaming somebody for being fired? It happens all the time. Mm. All the time. And you know it was your fault. Right. So it ended like, yeah, I feel you. You know what I'm saying? Well, mm-hmm. I'm like, just keep the, the podcast out your mouth. In a, I don't know why I got indigestion right now. But in the back. <laughs> I got Pepsi in the whip. Just yeah. let me know. <laughs> yeah. So I really do. I got a big ass bottle of Pepsi, Pepsi in there. I always yeah. got, I keep that by my yeah, side. Yeah, bro. I be at the end. Sometimes the reflux goes crazy. But long story short. He got the message, and he he understands that he is like like I'm like bro. All your streams are about no jumper, mm. and about like trying to expose certain shit. But this is the person that you begged for your job back. Like you didn't want to leave. Mm. Like you're still like if if Adam say you know what, let's come back on, let's make up and kiss on camera. He can't. Yeah, you know I mean yeah. not 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 really. But I'm just saying. Well, he does you know have the new teeth, so he'd probably be a better makeup <laughs> partner than he would have been a few months be ago. A better smooch. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I mean, really, yeah. like as much as I do hold that shit against him, and that would probably be like the reason why I could never imagine myself working with him again. It's not like I'm not interested in continuing to just dig that shit up over and over and keep talking. It's just so corny. It's like, yeah. If if there wasn't content involved, would we still be talking about it? No. It's just it's it's just shit for the fans and like to get them talking. Although I do feel because he takes the calls, right? So I feel like <sighs> it's kind of like, like him, no like matter what, the calls him. are gonna be about me or us at a certain no point. So I don't know. I kind of I mean, for him do your regard. thing. Just stop stop throwing out the fuck everybody. Run the well, fuck me up was the run up you done up. So it's like <laughs> he said I, that he said that about you. Oh lord. So it's like all He's right. running up. You threatening people <laughs> I never that seen don't this even nigga do no. His life. <laughs> Look, so my whole shit is this: you threatening people that's not gonna run up on you. You probably will never be in the same location as Adam ever. But it's, it's different tax brackets, so it's like <laughs> no, <laughs> just no, no, keeping it real. So you saying run up, get done up? That's like me beefing with Lush. You get what I'm saying? Like Lush, it looks crazy for me to beef with you. That's also what I tell. I'm like, I'm not beefing with you. Do you know how many people I'm beefing? It looks so crazy for me to mm. beef with Lush. But it looks even crazier for Lush to beef with Adam back to back when this was your employer. Like, like, like he employed you at one point. So, like, anything that, like, you lucky he don't just load up and say, hey, well, you were my bitch. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? But yeah. you weren't. It's not, it's not like you you pushing that up here, but it's just like, come on, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah. can't diss nobody that was paying you. Like, they know everything about you, bro. <laughs> yeah. Literally everything, even your social. Man, I don't know yeah. that, but, well, actually, maybe Josh can give it to me. No, yeah, but yeah, nah, yeah, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm I'm perfectly fine with squashing shit with Lush. Where where are you at on that? You, you, you got anything to say about our mans? What, with Lush? Yeah. I ain't got nothing to say with Lush. I mean, I said everything I said I, I was going to say about Lush. I, I feel like, you know, Lush just was, um, you know, he did a couple things that I didn't really feel like, you know, uh, that I didn't agree with. You know what I'm saying? So I, I said it. But it ain't nothing crazy. I ain't got no issues with him. Like, you know? I seen that Lupe ain't letting it go. She was still, she's still dropping fuck Lush comments and shit on Instagram. Right. I mean, that's how Lupe feel, you know? You bumming a cig off Brick Baby right now? Nah, nah. I dropped this. Oh. Uh, 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 you got a flatwood. <laughs> Pause. Yeah, but but then that was fraud too. It's like you don't want niggas to get on your ass. Like, you know what I said? Like, like we mentioned, like, and and not in a bad way, we not going back in on Lush. But like <laughs> even the shit with Lupe, like, come on, bro, you're doing everything for everybody to be against you. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, try to get some friends out the situation. Your thing would be like, let me be friends. Let me let me be friends with somebody around this motherfucker to where the sympathy comes from, all right, Lush is actually doing this the right way. And da, 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 da. You might not, you know what I'm saying? You'll feel better with yourself and you won't have to lash out all the time. Like, if you were still cool with the people you was working with, don't hold everybody accountable for you running your mouth. Right. The most impressive thing for me would be if he was able to go on stream after this episode comes out and not clickbait that stream about this conversation. (laughs) Because it's just so predictable and obvious at a certain point. Like, you don't have to make everything. Like, I will not make the thumbnail for this one about clapping back. Yeah, Yeah, it's just like, you know, at a certain point, you got to just... Say what you gotta say and then just move on, right? Detached. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. I mean, um, 
I feel like everybody, I, I, even though he's not here no more, he did get a look. He's doing things that he wasn't doing before. So mm -hmm. he still walked off with uh, other opportunities that he didn't have. So I guess, you know, everybody could just walk off and, you know, yeah. and do their thing. There is a no jumper clip that's like Lush talks about being the biggest Coke dealer in L.A. Right. So if he's doing content, that's better than being a Coke dealer, right? Wow. So. Is Are you questioning that? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He has content now talking about he's a coke dealer right now? I was saying that he was. Oh, I was about to say, what the fuck? He's reaching. Like, nigga, that's not weed. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Lush on becoming one of the biggest drug dealers in L.A. Liar. Right. <laughs> look, at his, look at his look at his face on that one though. That oh, was, yeah. hey, 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 all my potheads that's watching this right now, name one time that you bought a sack for less. Put it in the comments. They gotta be out Date, there. Time. Oh, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things though, is when people are able to do the transition from selling drugs to rapping or content and then they can just talk about it because at one point OGZ was pretty honest about the fact that him and a certain former host on here, he had served coke to him yeah and i, I thought, just thought that was cool like damn like yeah. you, you made it to rapper status oh uh, yeah yeah literally yeah right he gave me a party pack for free he gave you a party pack for free you knew who he was at the time oh yeah the store was lit he was just figuring like damn there's not enough people selling drugs at this store i might as well slide up in there yeah, right. nobody was selling drugs everybody was doing drugs so it's safe to say that <laughs> both your co-hosts right now are your old drug buddies right you never now. sold me drugs uh, Third person. Yeah. Zanny bars. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nah, you were serving her? To this thing. Uh, no. I never thought about that. Night. She lived with me. Those were right, my yeah. bars. She but I thought they were hers because she was prescribed. No. Nothing that a female has is hers. Is hers. <laughs> 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 Let's get that straight now. They used to be hers. It's like, yeah, you know okay. what I'm saying? She was fucking for them? No, she was getting them prescribed, but I was dumping all them bitches. So oh, it was shit. Like, yeah, she lived with, I lived with, well, she was on her. 90 a month? I don't know how that goes when you pay the rent, but it's in her name. Well, I, we live together. So Sometimes like, I miss the Zandas. I yeah, don't. I think I relapsed last week. Did you? Yeah. How man. was that? This movie's what taking its toll on you? How do you think? Yeah, because I'm back on them. <laughs> like every day or like a little bit here and there? A little bit here and there. All right, that's good. It was the movie. It was the movie. It was It was like, all right, the only way that don't I could not. Don't take a long flight. Like the perk makes you want to cuss a motherfucker out. Uh -huh. Like, you know, you feel good and everybody's just bothering you with the Zan, like, mellows you out. Like, I don't give a fuck. I was with Lil Zan yesterday, and it was super weird to be having a sober conversation with him after all these years. Since, How was like, that? Every, well, it was a great interview because he'd been sober for, like, a year and a half. But it was, like, at a certain point, me and him, like, like he was one person that I said to my girl last night. I was like, you know, if you had told me, like, a year or two ago, like, like Lil Zan needs to get clean. I would have been like, eh. like he, he was just like he was bad to the point where I couldn't really imagine him getting clean. So right. to actually be sitting there and having a full normal conversation with him was honestly like really nice just to see that it's capable. Even if you are fully submerged in the pills and the drugs, I don't know. I was I was impressed. Was it was he any different? He's definitely different. He's definitely yeah. thinking clearly. You, yeah. you you could see like emotions at times, you know, like he'll, he'll be like a little, we were talking about shit back in the day, like him fucking porn stars and like, because Riley Reed did at you, one point aired you, him out for not man. being able to get hard. Oh. And, and I brought it up and I could see that he was a little embarrassed or just like, oh man, what the fuck? But like, yeah, I didn't used to see that much emotion from him, yeah. you know? Like it he used is, to be a little bit more, uh, like, yeah, man. he was just fried, yeah. you know? Uh, did you guys talk? Well, I'll let your interview come out. Yeah, it's coming out. I've seen you him getting finessed by a prostitute online before. He was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't see that. You didn't? No. Did you see that clip? Nah, I didn't. Nah. When the girl was like, yeah, I'm with the tree, he was like, he's with this black girl, and she's clearly a prostitute, and what? she's just like, keeps on loading up, and they're like, out on a date and shit, and he hands her the money, she shows the money off, and all that, like. I didn't see that. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. I gotta have him back just to talk about that. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Ask him about the prostitute. You ever met him though? Uh, I think in passing. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've been in the same place, but when they first started off, well, you know, Dub and them, I, but I went to jail as soon as I met mm. all the little crew. So I've seen Zan in like two places, but I mean, like, like you said, he's always so. I was like, do you approach him or you just let him fly? I by? met little Zan. When he was so high, he introduced himself yesterday. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I do that to people all the fucking time. Yeah, I mean, you ain't got to be high to do that. I introduce myself. No, he was high when I met him. That's separate. Right. Yeah, but think about he how many people Lil Xan has met in his life. You really that shocked that he didn't remember you? No. Think about how many people he met no, in 2017, 2018 from where? shit. He, he got the face tats when I was standing there. Oh, so you were around him like a lot? Yeah. Mm. So you was with him when he got the face tats. So he wasn't barred out uh, when he was getting the tattoo. That's the ultimate time to be barred out. That's what out. I was about to say. Like, <laughs> he nigga, barred he out. He could have had a full heart to heart with you and not remembered you the next day. Right. Oh, that's. Zans what... do that. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they blank your memory. You're like, I said, what the hell? But you, you remember <laughs> the fool? Like well, you, you guys probably seen him, the dude Arnold, who had Anne Frank tattooed on his face. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I met just, him, too. I, I, he's spot. still around. He's fucking, he, yeah, because he was fucking with Xanarchy for a while, but I seen he's with BLP Kosher all of a sudden. So I'm like, damn, like, he, he ain't going to just slip away. Like, I don't know. Sometimes you see somebody get a really crazy-ass fa- face tattoo, and so you just feel boy, like you're never going to see him again. My boy Kosher, is he like a drug hit? Uh, Does he know. rap about drugs at all? Look right here, and Frank. Everybody used to say it looked like Cardi B. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> See, they wh- not lying though. It looks like a, a, a older Cardi B. I had a crazy threesome with this fucking girl too. What was her name? Celestia Vega. She was like a gamer girl. What her right there? Yeah, yeah, she came through the crib one night with blue hair, and we all got it in. Let me dye my hair back. <laughs> <laughs> you get dread extensions? <laughs> no. That shit looked like it they got were, a lot longer. They were in braids when I took about the braids. Oh, oh yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, Bro, I thought you really... had a weave on yeah, this whole no. time. <laughs> you braided it look shorter. Yeah. That's why we have it. Braids should be in the way. I'm sorry. I just feel like the, the world needs to talk about the Anne Frank face tattoo more. And even the, That's what you, I was about to say. You know like, Drippy? You, you know Drippy right here? With the Pikachu face nah, tattoo? Are they seeing this right now? Say. Yeah. Uh good. Yeah, man. This he got look at that. This is whole goddamn face of just a straight I, Pikachu. He's he's at what a point sauce do you think family. they're gonna regret that shit? Now. Never. Like now. Man. Yeah. I feel never. like if you're drippy from the sauce family. You never regret that. He got Hitler tattoos. He got fucking OJ Simpson. Well, he got everybody say, all over his body. Imagine how much your daughter would love you if you had a fucking Pokemon over your eye at all times. <sighs> Yeah, but I do have Lisa Simpson on my face, and she ain't really even mentioned that yet. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If it, like like, if it was like, oh, my God. Look I would have never even knew that was Lisa Simpson until you said that. Really? Yeah. It was a little peep No, because you don't have your, your face. Well, right you can't now. see it right yeah, now because it's all covered see, up? Yeah, yeah. Damn, all right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I haven't introduced my kids to The Simpsons really yet. Yeah. I introduced her to Bozo the Clown that oh, one time, she? and now she wants to watch Bozo the Clown, like episodes from the fucking 70s and shit all the time. Oh, that's, that's crazy. hideous. How old is she now? Uh, Two and a half. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, The Simpsons is a little much. That's I know. too much. I the kids, wonder, the kids watching that right now? No. The, Simpsons? the Simpsons? I mean. The Simpsons is tame. I think the 7 to 12 age group. Nah, because you know what I showed her? Once she got real into Bozo the Clown, I started to show her uh, uh, Krusty the Clown. Which yeah. is like kind of based on Bozo the Clown, yeah. and he's real nasty with it. Like he's smoking cigarettes, yeah, he all Krusty fucked up, was fucked up, he's making he's like perverted fucking... jokes and stuff. So I'm showing her like a compilation of Krusty the Clown, and she's so hyped on it. And as it's playing, I'm starting to feel like, ah, maybe I should not be showing this to her. I don't know. He gets drunk. He fucking smokes cigs. But yeah. he was like based on the real. Bozo. Bozo the Clown, which I I would not even have told my kid about Bozo the Clown, except for the fact that my girl will be calling me Bozo, and then my kid starts saying Bozo, and I'm like, you want to see Bozo the Clown? And now, all the time, she wants to see this fucking whack-ass show from the 70s. That's because she thinks it's her dad. Yeah, definitely. That's I could I could rock a clown. Oh, yeah, What I'm saying is that your mom, her mom calls you Bozo, and then you pull it up. Yeah. I I'm remember, a- bro, I swear to God, a kid walked up on me. I almost slapped the shit out this kid. Why? He just learned about Martin Luther King, right? Oh man, young dude. What, what, wait, what race was the kid? <laughs> I like where he the was going. He was <laughs> black. What's gonna happen here? He was black. This motherfucker said, "Unk." Did y'all ever walk with Martin Luther King? I said, hey, you bitch ass nigga. I went to say, you bitch. Hey, you think I'm that motherfucking old? Like Martin Luther King, bro? I'm like, uh, but he was, he's like six years old, but I'm like, 
they think everybody's just old as fuck. Yeah. If, if you're their parent, you're old. You're slavery old. It doesn't matter. One day my kid's going to ask me if I were fought in World War II or yeah, something. Yeah, like, it's just going to be hard for her to figure yeah. out exactly how old I am. Yeah, yeah. like, how old? I mean, how was World War II? Did you get drafted? <laughs> you going to show yeah. a picture of you in 20, 2016. She going to be like, oh, this is not If my youngest white. daughter asked me some crazy shit like that, I'm vouching to fuck up her life. My I'm nephew her, already yeah. think I'm that old. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling her, yeah. <laughs> everything i think i'm I'm lying to this kid all the way out. i remember uh because my life's changed like she the most mortified the i ever been i was in a pizza spot this is back in the day in brooklyn i'm like 21 22 it's like when i first moved there and there was this like 16 17 year old puerto rican kid named baby food that was just always like hanging out riding bikes and stuff right and i remember we were sitting in a pizza place like me him and like 10 other people just getting pizza and he just is looking at the tv it's martin luther king day and he just goes Man, this fool Martin Luther King was mad ugly. And I just like look out into the fucking pizza spot and just see like multiple older black people who are just looking at him and me for sitting anywhere near him. And they're was just he black. No, he was like fool? Puerto Rican. Oh, but wow. he, and, and instead of fool, he said the N word. I, I wasn't going to try yeah, to pull yeah, that yeah, off yeah, in yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But either way, like the looks that we got from these people in this pizza spot, I was just. Like, oh no! This I would have spit to the car. Like, it's time to go. I'm like, you it's can't say that about Martin Luther King. A black bro. person can't even say that about yeah, Martin Luther King. He's an all right looking like, guy, like, right? It, I mean, decent back looking then, dude. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, he was sharp back then, clean cut. He, he, <laughs> we wouldn't dress like that. We he, wouldn't have our hair like that now or whatever. It's just different, different times. Oh shit! Let's give him a, a review. We're all heterosexual here. We can have this conversation. That was a decent looking guy, Smash right? Smash your pass, man. MLK. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. No, nah, but I feel like Malcolm X was like he a real handsome a, guy, right? Yeah, Malcolm X was a player. Yeah, yeah, yeah he red head. He looks like your average reverend, though. Like he, yeah, he fits looks the like the part. A He's a handsome reverend. It's a church lady that's either, gonna marry him. Either a reverend or, or like See, a now, insurance. See now, came from from. Hitting hookers and all that shit. He was like a player <laughs> before he turned into yeah, an activist. He used to run numbers and yeah, all that. Yeah, he was somebody. So you now know. you know what I just found out, and this shit is old as fuck because this came out in 2011. But so Arnold Schwarzenegger, towards the end of him being the governor of California, his wife found out that he had fathered a child with the cleaning lady. From their house. This is old news, that. but I remember you remember that. it? I remember some shit like that. I, I totally fucking had like erased this from my memory if I ever knew about it. But then he proceeded to keep it secret from his girl for like 10 plus years. And they only found out because they were sitting in marriage counseling, him and his wife. And his wife was a, a, a the, the daughter of a Kennedy. She was a Kennedy or some yeah. shit. So she's like elite, you know, woman. Yeah, 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 and yeah. she basically asked him, hey, is such and such kid your child? And he just has to say, yeah. Imagine how mad would your girl be if you fucking banged the cleaning lady, had a kid, and then managed to keep it secret for like 10, 12 years? That's regular in Jamaica. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's just there's so, so many levels so that look, your girl has the right to be mad at you about on that regard. So Not look, I had a, I had a maid when we was young, right? Fuck the maid. Nah. This story's already not that bad though, because yeah. you're young. So if yeah. you did fuck her, it would be like, well, yeah. it's more like her being a molester. Right? Yeah, it would be a molester, but I didn't fuck her. That means yeah. you so got molested. I would, so I had a maid. We had to live in uh, when we were well up until I was like. Whenever shit fucked up when my mom went to the pen. Mm. But when I we were rich, was rich. Yeah, when we were rich, I had a maid. I had a nanny the whole time. Mm. Right? And so it was probably like till I was like eight, I think, nine. Some shit like that. So my uncle had just well, my step pop's boy, he liked my uncle, but he had just got out the pen or whatever, or he was just he was like our security too. So he lived with us everywhere in Arizona and all that shit when we used to move around. So the cleaning lady gets pregnant and quits, right? We never knew why, right? So she comes back around years later, like <laughs> with, a, with a kid. Like this hot rise, baby. Like hot this rod? Is, that's a <laughs> glad ride. Yeah, like this hot, a glad ride. I'm the like, names oh, back in the day was he crazy. was smashing the daddy the whole fucking time. It's not as bad because it's not like he was cheating on his bitch, but I was like, the lady was 
I used to look at her as like a mom, like you know what I'm saying. Aunt, I'm like the whole time, right. every time I close my eyes, you in there getting smashed out. And he was and giving he it a hot like an open room. <laughs> Like, his room was, like, the day room, and I was like, it wasn't no door you could open and close. So, like, what was you fucking in my fucking room? Or what? You get what I'm saying? Like, your mind goes everywhere at that point. You just start dying laughing. Wow, that's yeah, wild. The cleaning, like, I've all, have you ever seen a maid at a, at a hotel, like, or a maid somewhere? Like, I've always wanted to fuck a maid. Okay, so on this fucking world tour that we are just on, the the staff, the waitresses at the restaurants inside the hotel and shit are like smoking hot, like could be models out yeah. here. Like very, yeah, very yeah, confusing. Yeah, Hard yeah, for me yeah, to wrap yeah. my head around why they are just working at a yeah, hotel. Yeah, yeah. Cause I'm looking at and, and I've had this experience many times. When I went to Russia, the fucking girls working in the McDonald's and shit are like bad. I don't think people are making it rain out there. I think it's like either you're a prostitute or you get wifed up. Well, I think also, like, we value things that are, like, more common in their culture. Like, okay, if you go to Russia, like, the girls, a lot of them are blonde and tall. Yeah. And it's, like, to us, that kind of stands yeah. out as, like, oh, you might be a model if you yeah. look like that. But to yeah, them, that's more regular and yeah, shit. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, he's, yeah. So their beauty does it. It's, it's like. It's not as valuable out there. It's not like as this. rare. Yeah, like, all you bitches look like this. Uh, not fucking go to work. Like, But would I have that experience if I went to your hood? Would I be going to the donut shop and be like, damn, there's just baddies everywhere? Fuck no. Probably not, right? Nah, <laughs> yeah, nobody told me going in his hood. Hey, man, I ain't seen, I ain't seen, uh, man, I'm about to get real racist. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen a young black bitch with a job in so long. You get what I'm saying? Like, really? They, I'm what? just saying, like, nah, no, no, no. I'm talking about in the do? hood. You, in oh, the hood, you're asking where in the hood. Where, what do I'm they not, do instead of having a job? I don't know. Boost and steal bottles and shit. You think they're all doing know. criminal activity? You said in the hood, right? I mean, yeah. Are you talking about, like, from the neighborhood and they're not involved with the hood politics? Oh, the shit. ones from the hood do, t- do taxes. Yeah, I ain't seen a young black bitch with a job. I seen now. We got some prominent black women that gang bang from the hood that got houses and all that shit, like, run all type of shit going on. Like, I got a homegirl that we got a gang of them. Like, you know what I'm saying? But. As far as, like, I ain't seen a young black bitch with that put that COVID fucked everybody up. Everybody think it's some free money coming somewhere. (laughs) I swear to God, like, they will sit online and try to, like, it wasn't it just, like, a crisis in Louisiana again or something like a couple months ago. Oh, what, something COVID-esque coming down the pipe? So, no. I'm looking forward to that. Honestly, COVID was the best time of my life. I loved it. It'll never happen again. And I had no idea how good it was either. Because I would have been going to all the marches and shit. I was really scared of COVID. Or my girl was pregnant. And she was terrified. So she wasn't letting right. me do any so lit shit. not go anywhere. Exactly. And I'm looking on my phone and I'm seeing MGK marching with everybody in Hollywood. It's like fucking 10 miles from me. I'm what? like, God damn it. I should have like, been there. You been went there? there? Uh, yeah, it looks like a good time. I would have some security. I definitely would have some guns in there. You had, but... Have you had your chance to loot during that shit? What, what store no, I'm would not you looting. Hit? I'm not looting. No, what store would you hit? Come on, man. Oh, shit. I'll probably go to like... J. Crew, get another one of these shirts. Yeah. Ain't nobody <laughs> looting. So you would have went, went marching. Or you would have went marching. I would have just been there for the vibes, honestly. Like, I'm not really trying to get super political with it or Going anything. Going to a protest yeah. for the vibes yeah, is just the, the vibes. widest thing ever. MGK was, was definitely there for, there for the, the vibes. vibes. I'm not Everybody trying to let him be the was... king white boy in that environment. You know, yeah. I'm trying to step up as well, right? Yeah. Like Maybe we could actually this squash is, our shit because we'd have this such holistic the, vibes. This is the thing. I don't <sighs> think that MGK, like, you and MGK are around black people so much that it's, like, it's a course um, for the blacks. Is like, he, he's a pop punk singer nothing, now. Nothing, I don't nothing. know if he is. But, yeah. no, <laughs> I, MGK used to be the homie, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. like him and him and Kid Ink is like this. Oh, like, yeah? Bro, yeah, like, he's definitely been around black people. Well, like, if he could be at the protest, I feel like I could be at the protest. Although, sure. I will say that during the looting and everything, that many people told me that they heard people yelling, like, where's no jumper, where's no jumper? But we had been out of there for, like, a month or two when the protests oh, yeah. got lit. So, yeah. like, people were probably going over there and, like, our store wasn't there and they were yeah. like, fuck, I gotta tear up the shoe palace instead. <laughs> That's crazy. They was trying to get into the... <laughs> yeah, but I always yeah. think about that because I, I would have probably been posted up at the store with a bunch of... Blakeys. A bunch of got big, large men ready to defend Blakey. the store. Blakey I'm not trying right. to take an L. I don't Blakey care who... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, It's not yeah, happening. I would have slept there to. or whatever. You would have had to. Yeah. I mean... 
I don't know. They Motherfuckers, I don't too, even uh, think a motherfucker gave a fuck because it was black people's stores getting looted. Like, it yeah. was like, yeah, they didn't give a fuck who owned the store at on this fair, point. They, they was popping they, weed stores, all type of shit. They were they over here? Fuck. Oh, oh yeah. in New York, when that shit was going on, people would say that's a black owned business and people wouldn't go in the <clears> stores. <throat> I was about to I say that. that happened a few times. Like, well, I remember T. Rel told me that story about he was just in his store and somebody came in and then like he was like, "Hey, there's a black owned business," and the guy said, "I don't give a fuck." Yeah, <laughs> that, that, dude, that, that, LA. That, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, LA, no, no, yeah, 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 LA, LA man. Niggas well, is rude as hell. Even in my neighborhood, like the with the area where there's stores and shit, that shit was all boarded up. Black Lives Matter spray painted on the outside. Even Some, if it wasn't owned by black people. Hell yeah. But no, Black Lives Matter means we are not owned by black people, but we really don't want you to yeah, rob us. Yeah, black yeah, yeah. owned business is yeah, what means actual black. Sure. But also, it, where I'm at, like, I don't know if there's any black owned businesses realistically. Period. Yeah. Was yeah. people looting over there? I don't know if they actually were, but shit was hella boarded up. So they were definitely you, anticipating you talking it. About, are you talking about where you at now? I thought, not where you grew up. Yeah, no, where I grew up, definitely ain't no black people. No black story. That's what I was there ain't just no about black to people say. for sure. Uh, so, so I mean, you didn't, you didn't I grow mean, up around I black mean, people. Oh, I mean, honestly, I think New Nashville, New Hampshire is like ten percent black or some shit. So, so no, yeah. so no, yeah, yeah, yeah a very small yeah, percentage. Yeah. If it is, it's like a fucking. You want me to get a no racial franchise? Break no, nothing. That's why I love having Google. New Hampshire. Uh, what? So there was no black people in New, New Hampshire. I would say relatively minimal. Look at this shit. Ninety one point nine percent white. Whoa. Black or African one point five. I wow. feel like if I do Nashua, it's gonna be a little bit better. We got more Asians than black people. That's why I moved. New Hampshire. That's why you moved. I wasn't having it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need some diversity. I'm moving to Queens. Right. Oh, see, look at this. Nashua is eighty five percent white, seven point eight percent Hispanic. And I, I mean, it doesn't seem like they're even tracking black people. That might be a bad sign. Yeah. No, three point six percent black. But look at that. That's like double in Nashua because it's right outside Massachusetts. Is that where you're from, Nashua? Nashua, yeah, yeah. Nash Vegas. Nash Vegas. <laughs> hey, and speaking of, we've all been there before. A weekend trip to the casino canceled because real life came calling. Well, my bookie's new and improved online. Casino is here to change the game. Dive into a truly realistic casino experience featuring the latest in slots, progressive jackpots, and live dealer action, all from the comfort of your own home. Take advantage of weekly blackjack tournaments and a brand new collection of high-end games for a chance at real cash rewards. The MyBookie Casino provides a Las Vegas experience when the action's in your hands. And the best part is you don't even need to wear pants. Your adventure at the MyBookie Casino begins today with a generous sign-up bonus using promo code NOJUMPER. That's N-O-J-U-M-P-E-R to secure yourself a sweet deposit bonus. And that's not all because they're re- revamped loyalty program ensures that you will be showered with rewards including free spins cash back offers and a host of exclusive vip perks the more you play the more you win play anytime anywhere with my bookie casino okay so you don't have to wear pants well you can do it from your home uh, uh, or on your phone or the, the website you know well, sign me up for the perks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every, every time I read it, I think that. I was going to ask you if you ever had, had a VIP perk. <laughs> sign me up for the perks. Trying to figure out what a VIP That's perk is. That's a shirt right like. there. Sign, sign me up, up for, for the, the perks. perks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to get that shirt. Uh, uh, Bro, I haven't smoked weed in like five oh, weeks. Yeah. Hey, and we get that trademark today. Yeah, I haven't smoked weed in like five yeah, weeks. We and I, when I hear people talking about perks and shit in songs, somehow now like that sounds way more appealing. Like, damn, I'm not smoking weed, but I hear people talking about drugs and it's just kind of like, oh, right. oh, you don't smoke weed no more. I still hit the weed pen a little bit. I still How got does that this guy. I, 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 I hit it late in the day. Yeah, I haven't seen you with the raw joints. That's no, I'm done. I got it in the crib. And yesterday, Remo was at my crib, and I I was like thinking like, oh, he probably wants to smoke weed. I'm like, you want one of these? He's smoking it right in front of me. The shit smelled horrible to me. Like I didn't, it didn't smell good to me. Like the tobacco at the very least. But when I be hitting these little like mini dabs later in the day, and that's kind of like my rules. Yeah. I don't be doing it until like five, six p.m. when like the day's yeah. kind of like over. Yeah. So I'm like, I feel like a lot more alert throughout the day, and especially even with like my kid and my girl and shit. I, I said to her the other day, I'm like, you notice that I'm a lot more like present and, and playful and all that. Yeah, because like I mean, I've been smoking weed for so long that it. 
I always felt like it wasn't really doing that much to me. Yeah. But realistically, when you're playing with your kid and like the whole point is to just be focused and you're just hanging out for, you know, a half hour, an hour at a time without doing anything else. Yeah. And even just like me having to go outside to smoke, that like breaks up the the playing the and the hanging out a yeah, lot. So yeah. I I kind of feel like it's been like a really, really good thing for my life and I kinda can't imagine going back. But that being said, I mean who the fuck knows, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. But I mean I get the purpose. I mean, I get the point. I be with my baby like all day. But I know because I be looking at your fucking kid. shitty yeah. ass camels thinking like, God, that looks good. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I've never felt that way watching you smoke those things before. But now I'm kind of looking at it like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you hit a cigarette or two? I haven't. You have it, which is like that's that, gonna be worse than to me. That's weed. part of it. It was like if I'm gonna stop yeah, smoking weed and I'm gonna start smoking yeah. cigs, I'll still fuck with the like a little bit of edibles or a little bit with the the dabbers. Yeah, but yeah. I haven't like man that that would be a problem if I got like a real I mean, deal dab rig to... in the crib. <laughs> the dab rig, like that you would be rough. Yeah, you can't oh, do the, dab the torch, rig. bro. If the kid watching you take a dab or you know about dabs, the big ass thing you gotta heat it up and the glass pipe. You can't do that at the That's house. Too much. Not with the kids. I oh, not the around the kids. Not around That's what I'm say. Yeah, you right. can't. Nah. You could do the plug. I mean, play. nothing's could... around the kid. I'm just saying. She would like, maybe set it, it up in the back house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just imagine that motherfucker still just being half as hot as it was when you first oh, torched yeah, it. It's and they rap. run by and tsh, their leg. Oh it's yeah, yeah. Man. I burnt. I was at a Bella Danger's house back in the day, and I fucking she had the dab break going, and I accidentally planted my fucking arm down onto it, and had a huge crescent moon scar on my arm. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Just yeah. imagine the fucking kid accidentally getting oh, to yeah, the motherfucker while it's cool and all. My would, girl would never forgive me. Yeah. Ever. Oh. Ever. I would be in the doghouse for like six months. <laughs> if my kid got injured by a weed smoking yeah, device, yes. oh shit! My girl you already gets on pussy probation. Yeah, like, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like that's like, not. <sighs> you can't do anything to the, especially with paraphernalia. Mm. Oh wow, you can't do nothing to the baby. Nobody can be the first to hurt the baby. Because mm, I right. mean, if my my uh, 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 if if my wife ever like fumbles the baby, or every Ooh, time yeah. that she does it, I'll be like. Mm. But do you, you drop the baby at any point? Fuck no. You never did? Uh-uh, none of them. My kid hit the ground once or twice while we're... Yeah. Not, not like dropping out, out of our arms, yeah. but like there was one time where my girl like... like She thought that I knew that I had to hold the baby in bed, and then she like rolled right off the yeah, bed when my girl ran to go she, do something. Also, she's four and a half months. Yeah. So oh, it's, yeah, like, it's, tiny, it's like man. she ain't been rolling. She just now... I caught her wiggling out of a chair yesterday, and I just, we looked. And she was on her last wiggle, like she kept scooting mm. herself down like this, but she's not sitting up or so, so she couldn't get herself up. Like if she was sitting up, she for sure would have flipped. Cause we, your kid used hurts to her being so, so small, much. so we 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 sometimes we put her in like the little shit and don't strap the the uh, buckle on uh-huh. and just let her sit in there because she couldn't move at first. I was like, where is she gonna go? Yeah, but kids hurt themselves so much without you having to do anything. Like, I remember the first time that my kid was, like, running around, and I took her to the mall, and I just, like, put her down in the Bloomingdale's or some shit, and there's, like, a table of shirts, and she just runs head first into the table. Like, her head is the perfect height to just smash into the table. I mean, that really kind of ruined the jeans buying yeah. process for me that day. <laughs> How was y'all Father's Day? Ooh, good question. You're not dadding it? Oh, uh, no. No. Whoa. You got secret kids or none? I got secret kids. You got secret kids? With yeah. the maid, with the granny, <laughs> with, the, with the nannies. <laughs> What's a nigga? My, ki- my girl had a plan where she was going to take me and the kids to the skate park because she knows that, like, that's something that I've really enjoyed in the past is, like, bringing my kids to the skate park, but we never do it. But then, in reality, I woke up. My girl had already ordered me a breakfast burrito off Postmates, and then she gave me my, my gifts which included these Birkenstocks and, uh, you know, some, some wait, shirts, wait, some wait, boxers. Wait, wait, wait. Why did you, you have to say she ordered the rest, breakfast burrito off Postmates like you didn't really? Because she knows I love it. Oh, so she, she knew, okay. like, I thought she, you didn't respect it. She's I trying to think, like, what's going to be the stuff that will make him have, like, a great Father's Day. But then all we did was we just went to her sister's house and just hung out. And actually, her sister made tacos, and she's Armenian, right? And so I took I a picture of the taco, <laughs> and it's now it's been posted on multiple 
like Mexican meme pages on Instagram oh, wow. with people because I wrote in the caption I wrote Armenian made taco oh shit and now people are roasting the taco Ooh. which I actually feel real bad about because I'm gonna be honest with you the taco was great I don't eat a lot of Fire. tacos this day these Fire. days you really was shouting it, them it, it was great yeah I was shouting you it really out really shouted them I didn't tag her in it though, but, no I'm just saying you were just the, shouting out the Armenian made taco yeah what was, was the white shit on it sour cream oh shit that was pretty good. No, I, I thought it was the solid. You ate it? <laughs> nah, I it looked good. Okay, so what was on this taco? Can we get a picture of the taco? <laughs> you want to see the taco? Drum roll. Bro. Oh, oh, wait, I could actually bring up the, the meme page on the fucking uh, screen. Full <laughs> this is good, yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. What, what was the at? The at is he should have been. You Ain't Hard so Music. Nobody would try to have fun. Let's go. Instagram. We got, we, got a, we got a judge. Oh, yeah, he hitting the blunt. Instagram. She said, oh, he get the blood. Instagram.com. You ain't hard music. Yeah, look, look at my taco. How the hell did my taco make a meme page? The shell. I mean, until you fold it over, you don't really know what it's going to look like, no, right? It's, it's the shell. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most impressive thing I've ever seen in my life, but it tasted good. The carnitas it's not were good. bad. I mean, it looks like it's it just chocolate. because you, you said just, the Armenian thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's you just ain't say that. Nobody would. Yeah. Automatic content. Shell. Why everybody always trying to be like Raza, but yet hate on Raza? How am I hating on the Raza? I'm just showing a motherfucking taco. It's like, I don't know. What Wait. the fuck? <laughs> I love the Raza. Don't say that. <laughs> I Do think. you know what the Raza is? is? Yeah, they're, they're a race. Well. That's what it means when they say it. When you say yeah, it like I can't that, say I love my Raza. It, oh shit! Is it Raza yeah. or Raza? Be, Ra- I mean, you guys are the only it, people that can't. I know. And I was seeing, that's crazy. As I saw fuck. somebody complaining about ChatGPT. Where if you if you look up on ChatGPT, like uh, if you say like Black Pride or or you know Brown Pride, Hispanic Pride, Asian Pride, whatever, it's all it's positive all shit. Like, yeah. But then you put White Pride, it's, it's like a hate ugly. group. Yeah, <laughs> this is a hate ugly. group. I mean, but that's because y'all had hate groups that. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna question it. I'm just yeah, saying yeah, it is yeah, kind of. I mean, funny. it'd be different if it was like you know. What I mean, if it, <laughs> it just come with a different context. It's hard for me to imagine like a good natured white no, pride but, group. It just doesn't like yeah, sound no, like something that you would encounter, right. right? It doesn't sound right. But what if it was like a white pride group that was fucking with the blacks and was giving nah. a white pride group? That they, they can't be. No, they can't be now. They gotta be LGBT. They can't be now. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they can't be now because it's just like. It doesn't matter what the fuck yeah, you're you're about of, when you say but white. Pride. Saying you're proud of being white doesn't really make a lot of sense because it includes like fucking five hundred different ethnic groups, like French people, Italian people, etc. It's white. like when you say Mexican pride, I mean it's, you're referring to one Mexico. fucking country yeah, and people right. that are yeah. originally from there, and so. <laughs> It's yeah. a lot more specific. If I yeah. said Armenian pride, they say that shit all the fucking they say time. It all yeah. the time. It's yeah. a very specific group. Yeah. More sure. understandable, right? right? But you can't even say like German pride. Oh. Well, the Germans have they, you can't they, they have image shit. issues like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't say that. <laughs> but mean, out there like, they probably have a term that's basically that, I would assume. And they're, I doubt but if you were to do that in America, do it would know, probably hit a little you different. You know that like like no bullshit. I asked somebody like who owns like the brothels and shit out here. Is it like the mafia? Do you know what they said? What? Hell's Angels. Huh? They own like a good like I'm like, what the fuck? That oh, threw word? me off. I was in Hamburg. You know, I they trust got, them to sell me some have pussy. You been, have you been yeah. to, have you ever been to Hamburg? I don't think so. Uh, Germany? I don't think so. It's crazy out there. I've what you to... seen in Hamburg? It was like they had the red light district. Mm-hmm. It was like, I mean, it's like lit, because Germany's not lit. Mm. Berlin is like by the wall. Berlin is the sickest fucking That's one of the sickest parts of Europe I ever yeah, been to. Yeah, it's amazing yeah, out there. I was just about to say Berlin's lit, but Let it's like a real like back. party city. Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, that you know? shit's lit, lit. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But like Hamburg's like lit on some Amsterdam. Mixed with America, they say that's where the hamburger. But comes there's from. tons of times when you be in Berlin, just like forgetting where you are, and then you see like parts of it that are bombed, where they kept the shit just like that, and you're like, oh right, Did World War Two, yeah. No, I didn't get that deep. Yeah, I went what, to the Great the wall. wall. They got a Waffle House at the. Oh, wall. I've been to the Great Wall of China though. Right, I smoked no, weed up there. Like what wall are you talking about? It's a wall. The Berlin, the Berlin, the Berlin Wall. Yeah, oh, all right, the Berlin yeah, yeah. Wall. It separates East from right, West or some right. shit. Like it's something to do with. The war, and right? The yeah, when they knocked it down and shit. Yeah, how you been, Adam? I'm bull. You bull, ain't cool. 
Are you making it? Man, I don't get offended from that shit, man. I'm nah, life's good. My nigga, they Matt. They wearing red around Rick, around Brick. They wear red. Yeah, we wear red. Bro, he told me. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Welcome said, to LA. I saw man. I'm wearing so much red, I apologize. He said, man, I don't care about that shit. You see Desto Mac- Dub rocking all red. You see fucking Helicrips rocking red. Mac Talk been popping up here a whole lot lately, uh, man. Yeah, 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 what's yeah, going yeah, on? Yeah, 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 dig, let, let's up, talk about yeah, that. Let's, let's talk, talk about, about some that. things, yeah, man. I wanted to, you know, let it warm up a little bit. So, you know, that's why I was What's up with you, brother? He feels conflicted about being here, right? Hmm. Um, is conflicted the word? Conflicted is a good word. Okay. About uh, that, and also, I mean, I feel like, I feel like there's a lot of things that, uh, you know, a lot of questions I've had. Uh-huh. Um, we're gonna get to that, you know what I'm saying? But I just before here, I spoke to you the other day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I feel power. like you're in a different p- place now. I feel good. How you feeling after like taking a month off of? Like this whole ordeal that happened here. I mean, you know, when I was listening to the Gunna album, which we will also get into, I felt like I related to the Gunna album a little bit more than I might have in recent memory. Which because you did in Europe. Well, I didn't snitch on nobody, but you know, I yeah. I did feel like I I related to Gunna's perspective because I do feel like I've been through a shitload like over you, the past six months or whatever. You feel like everybody turned their back. He's talking more about people. I I, 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 I told y'all I was giving the album a run. <laughs> we'll go. We will we'll we will get, get to Gunna for we'll sure. We'll get to that later. But, but I mean, he's talking about a lot of people turning their back on him that he really supported. Yeah. Right. Like you know what I'm saying, no matter what the circumstances is. And, like and I feel like a lot of narratives were kind of created about me being this shitty person or being a bad friend or whatever. That at this point in time, I don't even feel like the people who are originally put. And those narratives out there are really holding on to those narratives so it's kind of it is kind of wild i feel like I, I just sort of had my like mental health and everything sort of thrashed for a period of time there and it, it really like i needed that month away to just sort of be able to like get my my mind together which i've never really felt like i Where's needed the that bar man when you need him huh? That's yo what you i'm glad thinking. i'm glad i didn't get into that though because a bunch of people I, my therapist was asking me like oh have you like been drinking have you done anything i'm like no, no. i actually stopped smoking like i actually yeah. like didn't Focused turn up. to anything negative yeah. or whatever but i feel like now i can kind of zoom out from everything and be like listen whatever happens with any of the people who left no matter how well they do, I feel like it's a small victory for No Jumper because it's just proof that people could come up in this ecosystem, do well for themselves. I don't hold that against anybody or whatever. I do wish that certain people had handled it differently and uh, maybe like not taken them leaving as an opportunity to kind of like smear me and like spread bullshit about my name and everything since pretty much everybody who left here like in large part has me to thank for the position that they're in now. But at the same time, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to like act like I'm a fucking victim or whatever. That's why I don't even want to use the term of like people turning their back on me or whatever. It is what it is. I'm, I, I mean, I, but at some point, you just, I mean, when uh, y'all do turn your back on each other, because when you walk away, if two people walk away, you're turning your back. Right. So even in a sense of if you don't feel like, oh, they're shading you and turning your back and turned against you. I guess as soon as I say, like, oh, somebody turned their back on me, that just makes me feel like I'm taking the victim role, which I don't want to do. I don't want to act like, oh, like, poor me. Because I'm able to, like, zoom out of this shit and really, like, look at No Jumper and look at the position I'm in. And I'm going to be real with you. Like, when we look at hip-hop media, all of the people who are successful who are at the top of their game right now in hip-hop media are pretty much in their early to mid-40s. By the time you get into your 50s, for the most part, Dudes are starting to kind of age out. Uh, I have nothing but respect for people like Sway or Big Boy or whatever. But at a certain point, they've kind of like been in the game so long that you look at them as elder statesmen. Those are the OGs, whatever. But Charlemagne is like 45. Fucking uh, Wack 100 is 45, your your mans. Uh, (laughs) Joe Budden is like, I think, 45. You know, it's like, uh, and, and then you look at somebody like Ak, who's like early 30s, and you're like, damn, he's like, hella young to be in the position he's in i'm almost 40 so from my perspective it's kind of like how do i continue to make no jumper relevant and and have like a real audience for the next 10 years because at some point i'm just gonna age out of this shit right yeah so if anything i feel like i kind of came out of this whole shit a lot more ready to just like devote time to really like 
caring about the culture and paying attention to shit and having listened to the Dirk album and the Gunna album over and over, it just kind of feels like I feel a little bit, I don't know, like, like one thing that somebody very wise said to me the other day, they said, what happened to, to you is what I've seen happen to a shitload of successful people where you become successful doing one thing and then you want to keep going and you want to like start to master other things and like get into different games and like for, for me in a sense I think trying to do more political content and trying to you know like a lot of people don't even probably know who watch this podcast but I spend way too much time studying poker and learning about poker and playing poker and shit like that we gotta and go play poker you play poker too don't play with play me. That. Don't play with me, Break Baby. Bro, we could do that every night. If that's what you want to do, that would be. You want to come to the World Series with me? You yes. missed it. It was one last I week. I do. It yeah. Was, yeah. It was one last <laughs> week. My boy, I think he, I don't know why, he bought in with like 2,000 or 1,000. I'm like, bro. Well, the World Series is 10,000. You want to play the main yeah, event with me? Yeah, that's what I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and it but takes no, they many, said many that, days. They said that it's like, it was like bonuses if you knock somebody out. like you Progressive knockout dollars. tournaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit like that. Yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? I never heard, but. The, it changes everything. Yeah, I want to, I, that is my. In game, I would I love to be to, the World Series poker champ because all right, I was talking to academics the other day, and he's like, "Oh, it, I just learned to play poker." I'm like, "Oh my god, another thing that me and you are going to be competing on or yeah, whatever." But like, but, as soon as I, I was telling him, I'm like, "Bro, be careful because that shit has consumed shit? My, my YouTube yes, timeline." Look, my YouTube timeline. Okay, so Roku TV or is that Samsung TV? They have a World Poker Series channel, right? Where they play that shit all day. And I'm also playing online. So mad because that's I be in there you watch watching, that? and she be like, "Why are you so hyped?" Poker people, I'm are like, different, you man. don't see what he got. It's a whole thing. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, don't fold. <laughs> yeah, I'm in there but like, I, but the only reason ahead, I mentioned though. poker is just Go to ahead. say that, like, I feel like I've become like refocused on what we're doing here, which is really like just trying to have the best possible conversations about hip hop and the surrounding culture possible. Right. And for a while, I feel like I kind of got distracted or I was just trying to take on too many challenges or whatever and like I don't know after all this time I just feel I just feel happy and I feel like I'm able to sort of zoom out look at what I got and be happy about it and I realize that the people who left that's not going to define the brand when we look at it five ten years from now you know it's like because I already feel like we brought in a bunch of super talented people and that there's other people who are trying to come in and everything and I don't know. I just feel good about shit, and I'm thankful for the opportunity, and I'm not letting the fact that we had a bunch of people leave like rule my fucking mind when it comes right. to what was yeah. this? Was this um, was that like the toughest thing you encountered, like you know, in my life? Hell no, 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 not even. Well, where does it? Where does it? Uh... It's kind of hard to judge because I had so many other people trying to smear my name for other unrelated shit around the same time, so it was kind of like. But just this whole time though, just not yeah. the whole time. How, oh, how difficult was that? Like, it was difficult. It's it was top, it's top five. It top was up. Five. Was it top five? I've been through a lot of top rough three? shit. It was probably. I don't. I don't want to give it a, a ranking, but, uh, <laughs> but it was up there. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, definitely yeah, one of the harder yeah, things yeah, I've yeah. had to deal with in my life. Right. But it wasn't just. If it had just been like oh, eight people left the show or whatever, that that wouldn't have been like the hardest thing. It was just that so many was, other people took the, the opportunity backlash. to attack me. Yeah, and it's right. like, That's oh, he's, about. he's in this moment of them. weakness. Let's just fucking gang up on right. him. And like, you know, like that, the, the cumulative whole of all that was Why the do you think part. that happened? Uh, well, I mean, I think in large part, it was just like people realizing that like, I mean, they were so close to the business, they could see what the business was. They could tell how much money the business was making from certain things or whatever, and they felt like they could do it on their own. So they decided to dip out at a time that they felt was optimal for them. And, I mean, there is a part of me that's like, damn, maybe if I had kept closer relationships with certain people or if I had stayed a little bit more tapped in or been, like, more real friends with certain people, then maybe that wouldn't have happened. But... Ultimately, I kind of feel like it was going to happen either way, regardless. So, I mean, I'm not beating myself up over you think, it. You think it would have happened if um, you had, like, tighter relationships with people and if certain things were, like, you know, if things were just a little different, you think the same thing would have still happened? Partially, but I feel like part of it is just the fact that I ended up having a ton of dependents. You know, like, there was many, many people who left who were basically complaining about money and they were complaining about money in a situation where I was already like basically losing money 
by employing certain mm -hmm. people or you know certain podcasts that we'd be making and the the dollars and cents were just like super obvious to me like oh we're spending x amount of dollars to make this podcast happen and then we're you know not bringing in that much money from it and it's not like we're like losing our shirt on it but it wasn't you know it's like it, basically like i felt like a lot of people just if a record label finds themselves not recouping too many times they got it part way so it's just like yeah. it's a part of business mm -hmm. at the end of the day that the, part the tough part was just that like i had to then try to make the podcast keep happening when i didn't really have any time to like really like try people out or whatever like that's one thing with joe budden when his host left when rory amal left he already had homies who it seemed like he was kind of like gearing up like even you i did the podcast a couple different times like without brick baby coming in thank god for brick baby because i feel like he he was somebody that kind of like got on my ass and like lit a flame under my ass i'm so, right. sorry for talking about my ass so much but like <laughs> yeah, you know well, he kind of like got me a little bit like hyped up to like really go with it and stuff but you know yeah i i, I definitely had to stand in your corner because right. i remember having that. that conversation with you i was standing right over here and i was kind of thinking in my head like damn like is, is brick baby too crazy is he too fucking sketchy <laughs> with all the weird <laughs> shit that he's involved <laughs> with whatever but you know i'm glad we gave it a shot you know yeah what was your original goal for no jumper i mean the original goal was just for me to fucking do interviews with all the underground artists and like youtubers and porn stars and whoever the fuck i was around basically because like i have been grinding bmx content for like 10 years and it's like all of a sudden i had opportunities to interview people outside of bmx and bmx was like what I, I had made a living doing and but then all of a sudden it was like oh i can break out of this and everybody who's in like a small niche you always want to like do bigger stuff i see that with the poker shit all the time i know tons of poker youtubers and shit and they just want to do something bigger but it's like when your whole audience, if you have 100,000 subscribers and they just want to see you talk about this one thing, it can be really difficult to break out of that. You know, and No Jumper was just me realizing like, oh, I have an opportunity to talk to all kinds of people outside of bike riding. And that was basically the, the beginning of it. But that's like what happens is that you you have one thing work for you with with a brand or whatever. And then as time goes by, that thing that you were doing becomes less special you know, like like all of a sudden everybody's interviewing underground rappers. Everybody's interviewing yeah. everybody now. Yeah. And it's like as time went by, like because the whole idea of just having like a bunch of friends who are on the channel or like a bunch of different cast members, that wasn't even a thing until like 2020. That, was, that right. wasn't a thing until the pandemic. That's yeah. when AD started coming around. And yeah. that's when we started to kind of like build it out. So it was like a bigger cast of characters and shit. What made and, you like come up with that idea? With like AD? Versus not just AD, because before AD it was House Phone, Cam Girl. True. And, all of them. So at first it was just you. I was in jail then, this whole run. Too. Yeah, at <laughs> first it was just crazy. you, and then I seen like you know House Phone, Cam Girl, and them. They had like a little group that they would have shows without you, right? They were doing that for a little bit, yeah. Right, and then um, like how did you come up with that idea? I mean, because when we had the store and everything, it was like there was just so many people around right. that I was like, oh, we got to like find a way to like have some of the homies like to do this without it being a reality show. Yeah. But shit. then, but actually when I look back at that time of being on the store, I was so lucky because I had so many random people coming through and just was meeting people constantly. And I would love to have that opportunity now because now we're out here like kind of isolated and shit yeah. and it's like way harder for me to just meet random people yeah. i bet i met a ton of people during that time period that now i would look at them like oh my god that person would be perfect for the that's, podcast or whatever but that's I, called I wasn't being in the field you're not in yeah, the field no I'm not more in the field, but, yeah. then, but then i think about having a store sometimes and it seems like a dope idea but it's but also it's, it's dangerous seems, as fuck. <laughs> it's dangerous it's just risk it's it's just like you're gambling day by day yeah. because anything could happen even yeah. if you have security whatever it's like some different shit could happen i don't know yeah. right security could clap a nigga right? but yeah, then, some at of them. the end of the did day you, but the people clap back too shit did you think no jumper was gonna get as big as it did no <laughs> not at all <laughs> no nah, definitely not but i mean it's been through so many different stages like if you were to ask our fans in 2016 2017 what do you like about no jumper they would have said i like that he interviews all the underground rappers early on and i like that the store is cool and there's like vlogs of everybody hanging out at the store and then if you were to fast forward to like 2021 they would have been like oh i like the the, the friends the camaraderie like all these guys like right. doing pods together or whatever and it's like in my head, it's like I know that probably a couple of years from now, people are gonna it's have something chapter. else that they're it, like, oh, I like this about chapter. it, whatever. It's just like, kind of always appeals to different things, you know. How did you meet House Phone? 
He was selling coke at the at the club. Oh, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, another uh, one. That's how you met all your. <laughs> that's how you met all your black friends. I mean, you make you make good friends that's through you, do, doing drugs. That's, you know. Yeah, it's it. That's how you build those like bridges. That's crazy. That you right? don't burn them because you need each other. The first so conversation, the, I, the first conversation I probably ever had with House Fun was like, "Yo, you want to bump?" Okay. Uh, so, like, if if it wasn't the first thing he ever said to me, it was the first thing I remember. So right. Yeah. And then how did y'all like? And who start? doesn't want to bump? You know, I I wanted a bump at Dude, the time. I definitely wanted down a bump. The bump. What are you saying? <laughs> how did y'all start like you know working together and stuff or whatever at first? I just thought he was funny, so I was like, "Yo, you should like guest host on some podcasts or whatever." Mm. And just it was all like super natural or just easy because I there's a lot of podcasts back then that I look back on where I had different people co-host who had no business co-hosting and were like totally raw. Like if you want to see something crazy, watch my Smoke Purple interview from back in the day. <laughs> Because Hesh is on it. You know Hesh? Hesh nah. is no jumper lore. He's, he was an important figure. But he, like, as I'm saying, like, introducing Smoke Perp, he's, like, Where's screaming he into the mic. He's just, like, the homie who's around doing all kinds of shit. But he's screaming, Boolish podcast in the world. He's screaming <laughs> it into the fucking mic. And I'm just looking at him like, what the fuck, dude? Like, we're trying to do a podcast. That, like, but that's that how raw it was. Energy. It, right. Yeah, it was just, like. It, I, but that's I, what made it different. Unmatched. Yeah, nah, yeah, but worse because he know better. But it was it, it made it better. different. But it was a little that was a little too much. It was like right. we gotta chill. But because yeah. ba back in the day, it was like if I'm interviewing you, you got three homies with you. Boom, s sit them down. They're just yeah. gonna be on the podcast with yeah. us, which was cool. But then like a lot of times, you'd have one fool who'd just be talking way too much. Yeah, like it's his interview. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that happened a lot. Yeah, would that's how it happens. Yeah, you considered a house phone a friend. Yeah. What what like. At a certain point, I mean, we barely point. talk now, so it doesn't feel too friendly these days. But right. we we talk once in a while, so sure. Right. What? what but it also became like we just worked together over time. You know, like was it all of a sudden like a we weren't really talking. Or was it more friendship? In the beginning, it was just friends, and then as time goes by, it's like because also like he was still partying, he's still like going out, he's still like at rap shows, he's still doing all these things. That as I got older, I just stopped doing all that shit. So it's like all of a sudden, the the period of time where we had coke in common. It's like way in the rearview mirror, you know? Right. So, yeah. You got anything else trying to make? No, I don't. Yeah. He's Let's getting a little get history it. lesson get right now. Yeah, because, yeah, because yeah, I, I feel yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, and he's, I wanna, going, he's definitely going somewhere. I, I, I'm trying I wanna, to figure it out, kinda, too. I'm trying to figure out something, right? Because it's like, you know, um, House Phone was somebody that, you know, was there, right? And then I'm trying to understand, like, how... The hip hop thing started, like you know, like because it was BMX biking, and then like you know, you said you had the store on Melrose, so you started bumping into all these cool different people, mm -hmm. right? And then like, um, house phone came through, and then the whole little crew came through. And it, when did it be like? How? Why did you choose like hip hop? Well, it like, was what, what? It, it was hip hop to start because I always had just been a rap fan, but yeah, then definitely, but then the the SoundCloud scene started to hit and I was like downtown LA just hanging out like literally like the the little peep apartment the goth boy click apartment was like a couple blocks away and so I'm just right in the middle of shit and like right. I just started interviewing all these artists that nobody right, else wanted right. to interview at that time right, who sure. became gigantic and it, it's weird to think about it like in 2016 2017 we were like the only spot that was really doing interviews with underground rappers so like that's the reason why six nine was chasing after me dogging me hitting me right. up all the fucking time trying to get an interview back in the day that wouldn't happen like that anymore because now there's a million different streamers and different interviews and like a million different ways like now we kind of got to fight if we want to get somebody's interview in yeah, like sure. whereas back then it was like people were just hounding me it was it was crazy Right. But I mean, I always just had like a real genuine interest in rap, even though I never did any kind of business with rap. But when I also look back at it, bro, in my early 20s doing the BMX stuff, I remember emailing and texting or like, you know, hollering at people on MySpace and shit in terms of like different underground rappers from all over uh, New York and shit and trying to tap in with them and like do stuff that would kind of like mix BMX and hip hop. But I never had any success with it because I didn't have any money. So it was like kind of hard to convince people to do shit back then. But when I think about it now, it's like, damn, you should have just tried a little harder. Cause I yeah, could have. You, you at one punch could have put something together. <laughs> For real. I tried to actually like get him to be a rapper at one point. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, my boy. What what's boy? The, what, what's like a good story Rest you got of House Phone? Like one of the. You, know. you, you like House Phone, huh? No, nah, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to. 
just understand some things. Like, so I think these are questions that I would, you know, I would like to know before, like, before making like a full assessment of the whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to know how. Were you guys really cool? Like, were you guys is really this, friends? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is there something is that this he be- ever did to you or, like, did around you that you was like, man, he he's my friend? Like, something, like, a cool thing that he did. Is this because during the beginning of what was going on, you were shining against potting with Adam at any point in your career from that point on? Is this why you Yeah, because it? when I seen, I, I, as, a, as, a, as a person that was watching, right, I seen things unfold, and I was just like, well, like, it, uh, why would he do that? You know what I'm saying? Like, certain things. So I just want to have an understanding of, like, what your relationship was with House Phone. You know what I'm saying? Was I mean, it strictly business? Was it strictly, no, like, early content? On, or was it, like, that's my friend? No, you know early I mean? on, we were only doing content together because we were friends. Like, just because we were actually hanging out, going to parties, going to rap shows, whatever. If you go back and watch the No Jumper vlogs and everything from 2016, 2017, you will see us hanging out on some regular ass shit like a thursday night three o'clock in the morning sitting in my room smoking weed and listening to music type shit but then fast forward to like 2021 it was like you know like we kind of were just doing content together honestly like it would just be like we would meet up once a week to do content and we weren't really like kicking it outside of that too much but although i mean to be real like me suspect and house phone went to the mall and like did a vlog where we were just like going around shopping and shit like right before everything kind of fell apart. So it's not like we were like totally not friends, but we, the, the, the friendship kind of became more of like an on camera thing over time, you know? Right. So that's, that's why I, that's like, I wanted to know, like, was it, you know, what that was like? So like when I saw, when I saw the, um, the whole thing happen with him, right. Um, I, my question was like, how did you, how did he find, because I, correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like, you said that you saw a comment from Gracie, the, mm. the, the trans woman, right. right? You saw a comment, and in that comment, what, 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 explain that a little bit? Well, I don't want to, like, dr- totally drag all this shit up again, but for the record, it was like, this is the order of events. I meet Gracie Jane at the Porn Number Awards, or the ABN Awards. We She ends up or we ended up having a conversation about her on the podcast with Danny Mullen. And then we post it and it's kind of like us joking around about her or whatever. And she leaves a comment that says, ask your boy house phone about me. Right. And so I hit him up in the group chat, like, yo, what the fuck is she talking about? Rah, rah. And he basically was like, nah, she's lying. Yada, yada. I'm like, Oh, she's lying. All right. And then, but she already was supposed to come on the podcast after that. Uh, and then she shows up. And then she just like clearly has an agenda where she wants to like expose him or whatever. Right. And you put so, that in a. What, did you hit him up directly? Or? I hit him as soon as that was done. Like, and, I, and I was just like, yo, like for the record, she just came on here and like said this, this, and this about you. And he basically was like, yo. Was it on a group chat or was it on a direct? That conversation was in the. The first was, was like separate. The first, the first thing was in the group chat because right. I, I like didn't really realize how serious it was going to be. I just like, you know, but then. It, he basically said, like, yo, I would appreciate it if you would, like, edit that shit out. And so we, right. we did, but then one of the editors mix, missed All some right, of so it. All right, so that was, like, something I, I was, like, I questioned, right? I'm like, okay, like, if we're all working together, whether we're cool friends, whether we're good friends or whatever, right, there's a certain type of respect that we have to have for each other. You know what I'm saying? So I, I just felt like, damn, why did Adam put it in a group chat? You know what I'm saying? That was kind of... I felt like that was a little callous, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I was just wondering why why not just hit him up, like, yo, bro, like, I mean, pull up, let me talk. Well, to who you. Okay, so that is gonna be true. You got it, right? That's yeah. what I would. That's what I would just go say, like, jokingly, like, going in there and like not knowing that he's even going that way with it is a motherfucker. Like, hey, she's trolling you. Right in right. the group chat. Because in retrospect, if, but, if he had but said, go ahead, but 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 go ahead. Well, in retrospect, if he had said like right away, if he had just hit me and been like, "Yo, it's true, please don't have her on the podcast," I would have been like, oh, "All right, like I'm not gonna have her on the podcast because like just out of respect for him." But to be fair, he said it wasn't true, and that's what made me be like, "Oh, it's not true." Yeah. 
And it made you want to like grill her even more but, about the. Uh, but so I didn't grill her about him yeah. at all. She just yeah. starts bringing it up on the fucking podcast like yeah. right away. Just starts oh, digging that's in. The Gracie that you was talking about at the beginning <laughs> of the <this> shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh wow, that's, why that's I was like, crazy. That's so, crazy. Yeah. All so, right. So he never even told you. So at, after you put it in the group chat, you hit him up on the side. I didn't hit him up like because he just he just hit me and said like, nah, it's not true. After I said it in the group chat, personally. Yeah, but then right. after she came on the podcast and said way more, that's when I hit him separately and was like, yo, like, what do you want me to do? Like, this is crazy. And he was just, he was still denying it, but he also was like, yo, can you please, like, edit that shit out? And I was like, oh, all right. Yeah, like, I kind of put two and two together, even though I was kind of confused why he was saying it wasn't true. Yeah. But, yeah, that's what I was so, that's so at So at all... Um, he didn't tell you at all, right? He ain't let you know at all, and that, that that's you know. He didn't as, tell me, but I kind of got the idea. At, but, the, at what time though? What time did you get the idea? After she did the podcast. After she did the because podcast. he was telling me like to to delete it, but it, it was just like if it really wasn't true, he probably would have like said, "Bro, it's a hundred percent not true on my on my dead homies yada yada." Like I like he would have probably talked about it different. Like. I, so I kind of does that come to idea. like does does hearing Gracie say when you heard what Gracie said did it come to a surprise to you at all like because you knew him for all these years like was yeah it a surprise yeah it was a surprise right? I never knew of anything like that and going that's on. why well, but but that's why I'm big on the be yourself even if you're around people bro be yourself all that shit that that happened in the closet though gang at the end of the day not not I'm not defending nothing y'all talk about but be yourself like a motherfucker is still fuck with you if you yourself if you be around it, like you don't have to say it but it's just like don't hide the fact that you fuck with these type of people or whatever the case is because anything you hide it come to light right you get what i'm saying right. like 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 you know what i mean so it's just like out of that whole situation what do you like do you regret anything about that i mean it with hindsight yeah i regret everything i wish i didn't fucking bring her on the pod i wish i, I wish didn't you even, didn't either man because she ended up saying like, after why the did fact, you do that like why did you bring what was the reason for bringing her like um Gracie we, up. it was just like oh like there's this goofy ass fucking trans porn star that's mad at me and danny mullen for fucking joking around about her on the podcast let's right. just have her on the podcast so we can because she was mad at us about like some joke that we made about her that didn't have anything to do with this so oh, it was like shit. oh we'll just have her on the podcast and like hear her out yeah and but keep in mind when i made that decision i had no idea that she even knew one of my friends you yeah. know which mm. if i had googled I would have been able to figure out that they had a music video together right. and shit, but I had no clue that there was any kind of like overlap with us socially or whatever. You, so when you see with hindsight, it's like, oh shit, I could have avoided all of that by not having this person on the podcast, but I really had no idea. Right. But then when you seen a comment, there was a, a little sign of something, right? Yeah. And so I asked him and he denied it. Right. And I'm like, okay. Like, but at that point, couldn't on. you have said, because I mean, at that point, did you have the opportunity to be like, hold on. Like it looks like, sh um, this person is trying to troll or like chase, like clout chase or something off of house phone. Was any did that, uh, did that thought ever come up at all? I just didn't even think about it that hard once he told me that it was bullshit. Damn. I was just like, oh, okay, like she's joking around. I figured like, oh, he probably knows her and like you know she's just making this joke or whatever. Right, and then and then when she came on, and was having the the conversation and. In that conversation, right, like, uh, Gracie kept on saying his name, right? Oh, yeah. Right. Which, and then that... How did that make you feel? Like, what was going on through your mind when that was happening? It was just awkward. It was just like, why the fuck? Am I, like, why are you putting me in this position? And I kept telling her in the interview, like... I saw it. I'm yeah. going to have to delete this. I'm going to have to edit all this shit out, you know? Right. And she clearly didn't give a fuck. And but but in, see, in that in that interview, you said you was like... Damn, I'm feeling like everybody's gonna hate me for this, and they're all gonna think I'm a bad friend and I'm a bad person. So you had that, like, it came across your mind that something that you were doing was like this. This is gonna end up bad. Well, like, because I already knew when I was talking to her that we were gonna edit it out. But then on top of that, I just knew that once we edited it out, that she was probably gonna expose them anyway. Because she had mm. kind of, you know, I'm like, if I edit all this shit out, because I think I said that in the interview, I'm like, we're going to edit this out. She's like, oh, if you do, then it's going to be even crazier or whatever. So it's like, I, I kind of felt like, oh, we're going to edit it all out. 
put it out and then shit'll be all right because maybe she won't be so mad. Because if I just didn't put it out after she did the interview, I knew she was going to be so fucking mad that she was going to expose the shit anyway. So I figured that like the best thing I could do would just be to edit his name out. But then obviously one of the employees missed uh, one of his names. Which is it's all you know. So it's so been a long time. Yeah. Do, do you? I mean, that hey, that uh, that's crazy. That <laughs> that's crazy. That right do you, do you think that that um, and it's so complicated that it's kind of like hard to explain all the different things that happen to people at times because it's just like a very complicated like sequence of events. Shorty yeah. weaponized her dick. It's a wild ass like coincidence too. That I just have like a random right. fucking porn star on the on the podcast, and then she ends up having some shit that she's like planning on exposing. So, about so somebody. more than more than AD and, and, and Trill, that's that's who what you had a problem with more of the house phone situation. Yeah, because it was like I that was that that was that was the problem that I really because it was like damn like. You you just do somebody under the bus that was your friend. You know what I'm saying? That's how it looked like. To me, it definitely you know looked that way to a lot of the fans too I at that time. Yeah. You know, it, it just looked like damn more than Sierra because that was like a those are business choices. Yeah, those yeah, are different. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like what whatever. Saying. But that was your friend, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like that was your friend, and for for to see that and to see you guys mature and like you know what I'm saying, like bring something that was like that from what I first saw it into something like this, and I was just like, damn, you know what I'm saying, like. It 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 kind of bothered me because it was like, damn, he just threw his friend under the bus like that, and he had opportunity to say, you know what, we not gonna put this out. We not gonna first of all, we not even gonna interview her. We not, but I didn't I didn't know all of this stuff that you just said, right? But from as a fan perspective, as a person just watching, it's like, damn, this dude is evil, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right, I would say it's a, it's an issue of intent because. Like, two different situations. If I'm driving my car down the street and a fucking little kid runs in front of my car and I kill him just by accident, nobody could say, like, oh, you're a fucked up person because you were just driving down the street and you and yeah. you killed this kid. Yeah. But if I'm driving down the street and I see some little kid walking on the side of the street and I'm like, oh, I'm going to hit this motherfucker. And just, like, you know, yeah, run him off the, the road. The road. Yeah. That's different because if the court can prove that that was my intention or whatever, then... It's an issue of intent. Like in reality, I had no intent to hurt House Vone or to do anything negative to him. And I actually went very out of my way by massively having them edit the podcast and shit to try to spare the shit happening. Now, yeah. the one thing that people could say is like, it was such a big deal that you should have personally reviewed the entire podcast yourself, which that is what I, re I regret is that I had actually done that. But to be fair, like, Every single time, every podcast I do, there's almost You're always so something to delete. Yeah. yeah, there's always yeah. something to delete. Like, not every episode, well, but a large yeah. percentage. This is different. Yeah. This I did different. a Crip Mac interview the other day, and he was saying this, this, and this, and he made me, he's hitting me up after delete this and this. All right, I tell the team to do it. If they fuck that up, I'm going to have to have a conversation with Crip Mac. be like, bro, I told them to delete it. They fucked up, yada, yada. You know, it's like that, that was what it was. There was right. no intent for me to fuck up our friendship. But we, I wish that our friendship was still... I was telling him he was going to end up doing that anyway. Like, well, what get that, it. But this is different than the, the, the situation with, with the house phone situation and the Crip Max situation is completely different, right? Because here you have it, somebody that's saying something that could damage this person's, not even just career, but mental space. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, it could, it could damage this person. Like, so here's this person saying something on a platform that this person... That that the person that he's saying it about that uh, that Gracie was saying it about is a part of the platform, right? And it and it was just like, you know, I felt like you should have just been like, you know what, we're not even gonna put this out because of how like damaging it could have been and how and I felt like if you would have done that, like certain things that you've done, like makes people look at you in a certain way, right? So it's like that one part right there, and it's just like it, it's a it, for for a lot of people, it's like damn, um, he doesn't really care about the people that work for him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's about content. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, this is gonna be viral. Put it out. Like it's content. It's content, and it's kind of like in eating inside, like eating amongst your own, like eat, feeding off of. Your own, your own like team. You so know what people got to take my word for it, but yeah, never at all did I ever 
want to expose them for content. It's not like like how much extra money out of like off of YouTube did we make because of that situation? Like right. almost nothing. You know, right. it yeah. was like, and it was not an enjoyable experience for me by far. That was like even before all this other shit happened. I was fucking down bad, like depressed, like bum the fuck out about that whole situation. Mm. Like the narrative that I didn't care is just like crazy. Like, I was care? super so upset about care? it at the time. Hell yeah, you, of course. Do I you felt care terrible about, about it. Yeah, and we had a lot, like me and House Phone, people don't know, and I'm not going to go into details or anything, but we've had conversations since then and stuff. And I can confidently say that given a few months to like zoom out and view what happened and everything, that like he gets it. He knows that there was no ill intent for me in that regard. What's one thing you learned out of that whole situation? That particular situation? Don't fuck with trans people. <laughs> uh, 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 just they're exposed. Just that ass. I don't know. I'm not really sure what to learn from it because I just wish that the... I don't know. I mean, I could have not put the podcast out and that would have been cool. But the thing is, is like I kind of know that the end result would have been the same. Because that bitch would have been so fucking mad about me not putting the podcast out that I know for a fact that she would have gone on Instagram and exposed it. But at least from the pers perspective of the audience, they wouldn't have been able to blame it on me. They'd be like, oh, this person is trying to expose for whatever. Sure. Yeah. They wouldn't have been able to blame it on me. Yeah. But I know it would have worked out the same way. Yeah. You know? So, so it's do like, you feel like you crossed any lines in that, in that, in that situation? I mean... Everything was accidental. So right. it's like, I don't think that I did anything purposefully evil towards him. And I think, I feel like a lot of people, like him included, kind of get that at this point. Uh -huh. So, in terms of crossing a line, like you never want to be like, have your platform exposing something yeah, about, especially with something like that, where it's like, we all, I'm assuming that you guys are not like big proponents of people sleeping with trans people or whatever, but you also, we all agree that. We should keep each other's like you know business secretive or whatever. If there was yeah. anybody in this office and I knew that they were gay and they were keeping it low key, obviously I'm never gonna fucking say a word about it. I'm always gonna just try to act like I don't even know. You know, I don't want to fucking be involved with like exposed. I, I think I out, outing people in general is bad. Is yeah, bad yeah, 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 yeah. form. You know, like if, if you got a gay homie and they don't want people to know, it's, it's, and, and not saying he's gay, but like it's on. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I just feel like if a people if there's a team, right? The team should be protecting everybody amongst the team. Everybody should be protecting each other, whether you fuck with them or not, whether you like them or not. If we're a part of the team, we need to be protecting each other, right? Right. Um, you know, now that to you said that, extent. yeah, to the fullest extent, you know what I'm saying? I agree. And 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 you know, just judging from that, that's why I just want to ask you. I'm not trying to harp on anything mm. that you already talked about, but it is questions that. I have right. So now, I think in retrospect, do you re do? You, how about like putting the like group chat? Like you know what I'm saying? Like if it was something like that, do you think that putting it on a group chat was kind of like a joke? Like kind of like, you know what I mean? Kind of putting him in a position where well, the only, he had to lie. Like the only shit? thing I said in the group chat was when she left that comment, and right. I was just like, "Yo, what what is this?" Which. I then realized the severity of it. So every conversation we had after that was just so one on one. Do you regret one. that? Yeah. I mean, in a group chat, I guess. But also, like, but you got okay. joke in the group chat back then. Constantly. That's what I'm Constantly. saying. So it's like right. constant, like, right. come on, so, you got to so think. We got to. So of, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm asking you these questions so you so, can kind of let these us know. People we don't know. know but, yeah, but, okay. We don't, the only yeah. the only thing like the comment that she left was like, "Oh, ask your boy house phone about me." It's some all shit, a gray area, which though. I didn't it's really know what area. that meant. It's but gray. I sent it in the group chat to just be like, ah, like some some regular shit that you're gonna clown your homie about. Yeah, it, sure. it wasn't obvious to me right away that like, oh, this is a big deal to him, or that it's gonna turn into a massive fucking deal. You know, yeah. right? Do, but do you regret that though? I don't think that the, the my, group chat thing was the biggest deal. You know, like, I don't think like, he thinks that. So or what he's saying that. is. If another Situation. trans leaves, <laughs> not not, no, any, not even no, just no, trans, no, just but saying, anything. Not not even we're not even going against it. But I'm just saying if it, another if crazy. another motherfucker is outing somebody in your car, nah, because snitch shit sometimes it do need to be out if it's real. But look, that's why I'm like, but say another person is outing somebody about their sexuality on your page or right. any any 
type of gay, lesbian, LGBTQ saying that they're cool with somebody else. Well, because will we, you ever do it in a group chat again? No, knowing what I know now, I would be even more precautious. But to be fair, at that time, I didn't even know that that's what she was inferring. I thought it's that I area, was though. kind of inferring that. But all right, I'm going to put it in perspective, too, is that there's a host on this channel and two different times in the last six months, somebody has come on the podcast and talked shit about them, like specifically trying to go at them and say this, that, and the other thing on some more street shit, not some gay shit or whatever. Right. Yeah. And we edited it out in both different cases. And in those cases, the editing team did the correct job and they edited it out. And, you know, like that, that was even, I would have done that anyway, but that was even more clear to me of like, oh, we can't let people come on the podcast and use the podcast as a platform to like shit on people who are like loyal long term employees, you know? Right. One thing I noticed like different with this. I appreciate group. that. Yeah, it, it wasn't you. Me. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> Even if it wasn't, I just say I appreciate yeah. it. No, but if it, I it, interview somebody it, it, who's yeah. from an opposing side or whatever and they want to say, hey, Brick Baby is this, this, and this. I and mean, they gotta come with them facts. They gotta exactly, come with yeah. that. Yeah, come with the receipts, right. man. When you come with the receipts, man, I'll think so to tell me. Yeah, you know I mean, that's <laughs> what I just be telling you. Where are receipts at, man? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get it's jiggy. Um, <laughs> do you think like do you think like the content, um, at any time, right? Do you think you ever crossed the line with content? Yeah, with just like doing. What you've been doing with No Jumper? I mean, I think we get the the whole point is to get right up to the line right. to do like the craziest shit that you can do that doesn't like you know negatively impact people or create something super negative. Like obviously, like you you spoke to me about the Richard Spencer debate thing right. the other the day. Ass of podcast. That's an example of something <laughs> that like you know I don't think that I, I think it was probably a bad thing for No Jumper as a business. I don't think it was a bad thing from like ideologically like i think it was a fair conversation for us to initiate on the podcast you know and i feel like people who act like it was something that it wasn't are being kind of dishonest and all that shit but you know yeah do i wish that i didn't do it yeah i guess I, it was probably like the most extreme political conversation that i could have imagined at that time in terms of having somebody who was like on that type of time or used to be on that type of time right but you said business right, right? you said for business and what about the people that took that as like, you know, um, a slap in the face? What about people that felt like, you know what I mean? That felt like a, a way about that, like, you know, seeing, because your platform, how many, it's 4 million people on, about, about 4 million, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would say half of that would be black and brown people, at least, right? Probably. Okay. Um. Where's the representation for them? And also the people that work for you, right? Most of them are black and brown, right? For the, for the most part. There's all types of people, very di di diverse group here. But there are a lot of black and brown like people that make up of this, 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 this entity, this no jumper entity, right? And when, when you have somebody that has made statements such as he has, mm -hmm. right? That has particularly been about minorities, right? And 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 negative things in lights that would make people feel uncomfortable, right? And when you bring somebody like that on this platform, knowing that more than half of your viewership is of the people that would never even would would feel very uncomfortable with him just stepping in the room if they knew who he was. You know what I'm saying? And the things he've said, right? What about those people? I mean, okay, right, this is the thing. I liked Van Lathan's critique of that, where I think he was right that I should have done more to bring up specific statements that he had made in the past that were racist or whatever and dug into those. Um, in reality, when he was on the show, he didn't say anything racist at all. He didn't like because he, he did though before. He's disavowed all that. Yeah, yeah. But his I should have put more effort into talking about his past statements. I didn't because of the fact that I felt like it was supposed to be a debate between him and someone else. So I didn't necessarily think it was like on me in that moment to like bring up everything he ever said. But I wish that I had done a lot more of that and that I had at least taken like an extra half hour out of the podcast to be like, well, why did you say this? Or how do you feel about this statement now that you have, uh, you know, pivoted away from racism or whatever? I do wish I had done more of that. But at the same time, like in terms of us building a team and stuff, 
I want a team who is willing to like engage in like, you know, conversations that or understands that that's one of the things that we do here is that we're going to have conversations with people that are all over the place politically. And some people are going to have op- offensive opinions. We have somebody like Sharp on the podcast who clearly says things about women that I would assume women who work here are offended by at times. Uh, you know, he's like definitely had some misogynistic viewpoints. Even I remember reading a thread the other day about fucking Brick Baby and Sharp, basically, or maybe it was Almighty and Sharp, uh, and Brick Baby saying some shit about smacking girls or like when it's appropriate to smack a girl or some shit. I would assume that there's women who, who work here who, if they like really dug into those statements, would be like, I don't think that this is appropriate or I, I think it's fucked up or whatever. I mean, I'm not in the business of like policing every single opinion that's brought on here, but for sure, in retrospect, if I could have, I would have gone a lot harder on Richard Spencer just just so that the people wouldn't be able to put this argument out there of like, oh, you gave him a pass or you didn't really like press him about all that shit. I wish that I had at least done a little more in that regard. Right. Um, is this a business move or is this like, is this like for business or is this for as a person? Um, I think it's both. Like, I don't really like myself. I'm not. Like, I already know how, like, I had already watched a ton of this guy's content at that point to be able to get ready for the interview, so I already kind of knew how he felt about stuff. The thing is, is that we spent that whole debate talking about Biden, Ukraine, the fact that Richard Spencer used to support Trump. You know, a lot of that stuff felt like, that. that's kind of like where the conversation ended up going, because he wasn't saying anything racist on the podcast. No, he definitely wasn't, but it but was if just I, the fact that I should have brought more of that stuff you, you, up. You, yeah, you, that... Because not not you personally, because it's not like you personally. I understand why you didn't or you wouldn't feel like you really had to, right? But because you are the the, the you started a platform that is more than you now. It's right. it's more than 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 where you came from. It's it's bigger than that. You know, what I'm, I'm saying? a white guy re- who has created a business that's very relevant and influential within Black culture, right? Which, so, and so, that that puts a, a different set of expectations on me. Right. And at that time, I was just like, you know, like my mind state was like, yo, Destiny and Richard Spencer having a debate right. would be the craziest shit. And it was crazy. And like, you know, a, like his fan base or, or Destiny's fan base, did he, they love that. I didn't hear nothing did negative they coming from shab, that side of the That's what I was about to say. Did they, did they shab the black race at all? No. No. At any point in time, no. did they disrespect you? What, on, the, on the pod, it, it wasn't like that. No. On the pod, you're in the past, about. yeah, but no, on the no, podcast, on the no. pod, they didn't. But it's yeah. not about what they said on the pod. It's about who these people are, and both the of fact them. Just that him. No, is, Destiny is like nah. super liberal, open minded. Because that was part of the problem yeah. is that there was multiple different black intellectuals that I tried to get on the podcast to be there with Richard Spencer, like Van Lathan, for example. Van Lathan was like, "I'm not doing it." Which I yeah. understand. I totally respect the fact that, that he said that. I think that. you should have just been like, I'm not going to have him up here. Well, because one guy wouldn't do it. Yeah. It, but because it's, it's, a, it's a sign that the people that are a part of your people are going to feel some sort of way. So it's not, it, it's, the conversation was a good conversation, right? I, it's nothing wrong. It's content, it's good content. You know what I'm saying? But because you have a platform that like you said represents took it, it took on a Our whole other responsibility yeah. now you know what i'm saying that responsibility is supposed to be i feel like that's supposed to be like you know in the in the forefront of making these decisions but yeah, so, so many people- I, and i feel like if if those things were done and 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 more of that was like you know what i mean showed i think more people wouldn't be so quick to turn it back because all right you want to hear a good example though is that we did a podcast with nick fuentes who's way more like actually racist right now we did that with me ad flacco and sneeko and we never got any shit for that because even though nick fuentes was able to do his little thing and get all his points off and say all the shit that he was gonna say we had a couple black guys in the room so it's like it just didn't it felt like there was representation, even if they weren't necessarily people who were going to be able to argue with Nick Fuentes because he's pretty good at doing his little song and dance. So I wish that I had, you know, I felt like Destiny was a good representative of 
progressivism, Democrats, et cetera, people who are anti-racist. Liberals. But at the end of the day, he's period. a fucking white guy. So it's like, it's not going to be, to people from the outside, he's not the representation. I feel that like nobody, but Destiny but says some crazy shit. He made that one joke about the slave owner thing or that, whatever. That, I, I, let, let's talk about that. Joke. But he's but but in reality, <laughs> he's like the most anti-racist dude that you're ever gonna meet. He's super understood. fucking educated, so what, you know. Understood. Well, but still, it's just it's just how people like it. I just feel like more thought and and and. and should be put into the people that are watching and more of a respect should be put into how they feel because a a, a joke like that that hurts for uh, like a lot of people that went through that that have family like that 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 knows the story of what their people been through I'm sure that a, a joke like that said between two white people right it hurted a lot of people. I just can you think, see? Can you see where that? Can you see that? I get it, but I also feel like people are kind of mischaracterizing what that joke was because the reality was that that joke was just him making fun of me. You know, he was giving me a hard time because, like, because the thing I said was that at first when he came to do No Jumper for the first time, he thought that I was a black guy because he clicked on a random No Jumper episode and it was a bunch of black dudes on camera, so okay. he figured I was one of them, yeah. and then he said. Yeah, well, I thought you were a black guy, but then I found out you were actually a slave master. Right. So that was him basically like shamming you. giving me a hard yeah, time yeah, and being yeah, yeah, like, yeah. oh, like you're a white guy who owns a business with a bunch of black, black dudes work at whatever. Yeah. And I got that context at the time, but then obviously once somebody clipped it and put it on Twitter, it's just it lost all that. Right, but but now can you see how somebody could feel disrespected by that? Yeah, totally. And and feel like, you know, just Hurt by that because I'm sure there's a lot of your followers that looked at that looked at that one clip so, and and didn't uh, and didn't get the joke. Yeah. What about what about the white slaves that work here? Then? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of them now too. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> like, 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 no, I'm just like, like, because people are so big on like. I guess I'm a liberal black person because I've been around the world and I've met a lot of white people that really don't hate black people. You get what right. I'm saying? No, so definitely. it's like. Certain shit, people, like, prey on. Certain shit shouldn't be said. Like, slavery jokes, of course, is like a no-no, period. The the dude who said it, even even if he was trying to sham you, he could have kept that Because I was thinking record. about that after that happened, where it's like, all these years on camera, I don't think I ever made a slavery joke. And we joke about everything under the fucking sun, but I never made a joke about that because it's just so obvious to me that Shit is old Flemish. it's just not a great thing to joke about, right? Yeah. Like, it's the most painful thing in American history for black people. And I just don't, like, like even if it was the best, funniest, fucking perfect joke ever, it's just not the kind of joke I want to make. Destiny is coming from a totally different place because even though he is totally anti-racist and is a, a liberal and everything, he's also not hip-hop. He probably doesn't spend a lot of time around black people. He probably doesn't know. And the black people that he does know and is around probably have the same fucking edgy ass sense of humor that he has. So he definitely viewed it differently. Um, and, sure. and that kind of thing was That's probably like the kind white of, boy that could get away with saying that. <laughs> right. Saying the N word? Yeah. It's like the white but boy is, that, but that, that's that, not that, the, that grew but that's up. Not no, the, no, uh, I'm not saying it's the same shit. I'm just it's, saying it's a different it's like, platform. It's though. like he's mm -hmm. been around so many blacks, they know. Like the platform that, that you have them. built cannot understand that. You know what I'm saying? And I, I just feel like, you know, moving forward, I, I just feel like people just want to see that you actually see like the, 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 the you know, the, um, the effects of some of the things that are said here and that some of the things that are done here that like, you know, it kind of like, it, it looks like you just, you know what I mean? Like you kind of, you kind of, um, integrity, right? Like it, it like seems, it questions the integrity. you do anything of, for content type shit? Yeah, it, it, it questions the integrity, you know what I'm saying? And do you think, where do you stand with integrity in terms of like content and, you know, like, you know, where does integrity stand here? Well, I mean, I think that what we're doing on here is we have to be ourselves. We have to fucking, you know, like, like, I don't even know what that means. Like, we, we do content to entertain people. 
Is but it is important there any that we integrity? have integrity? Yeah, of course. Integrity in the sense of like standing on principles and not putting things out there that we actually think are bad for, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, integrity in terms of what? Just integrity in terms of like, what's the no, what is the integrity here? Like, what, what, what would you not? What is the where? What would you not do, and what would you do? And like, you know what I'm saying, where's the line? Like, you know what I mean? Well, like, there's a lot of different lines and a lot of different things. You know, like when you talk about the 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 gay thing, or when we talk about, the, the, okay, I'll give you an example. Is that I was doing an interview with somebody on here, and they called another L.A. rapper a snitch, and it was like a kind of awkward thing. Where actually, it might have been Brick Baby. Um, it might have been you. Fuck. I can't remember exactly who it was, but somebody, somebody, you or somebody like you from where you're from yeah. said that somebody else was a snitch. And it was like, I immediately knew because it wasn't, this isn't like a person who's been widely accused of being a snitch. It was like the person who was saying it was probably just talking about some shit that they heard in the street. And I immediately, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh my God, like that's going to start a fucking war if that shit is put out there because this person being called a snitch was like a really fucking big deal. And so I just immediately told the team, like, edit that out because it's not important to the conversation we were having. And I know that they don't have proof that that person is a snitch. So if they're going to have that conversation, put it out there yourself on your own platform or whatever. And maybe if it gets big, we could end up talking about it on here. But that is an example of integrity of not wanting the, com the content to unnecessarily hurt other people. Right. So I would consider that an example. How about the integrity of like, you know, um the integrity for the the people that may not come from may not re come from where you come from, um like the integrity to making sure that you know there's some type of um respect and like just just a, a a thoughtfulness of how you know the content will affect those people or you know what I'm saying how they how they'll receive the content. I don't know. I'm like not 100 percent sure on what you read. You say I mean, you, you talk about like the racial stuff or like yeah, Destiny like, making that joke or whatever. I, I mean, mean just, it's, it's just, just a nuanced situation. Like I if if I had spent a half hour in that Richard Spencer conversation grilling him about some of the stuff that he had said in the past then i would be able to sit here and say i have no regrets about doing that conversation on camera because i felt like i did what i needed to do i'll give you an example there's a a podcaster i've been listening to for like 10 plus years this guy sam harris he's a super liberal guy whatever and he did an episode where he interviewed like an ex-nazi now this ex-nazi had stories about some gnarly shit talking about mm -hmm. running up into mcdonald's and like seeing some black dudes there and just b straight up calling them the n-word and getting into a huge fucking fight in the mcdonald's like the worst shit you ever heard ever and this guy ended up doing prison time and then he comes out of there and he at some point decided he didn't want to be a nazi anymore and i'm listening to sam harris who's like this guy i've always looked up to and he's super anti-racism and he's having a conversation with this guy who has changed but he's got stories about like the worst shit that you could ever imagine of basically just like brutally attacking people for their race and i don't think sam ever got any shit for that number one because he doesn't have a overwhelmingly black audience right. but then also because he probably throughout the course of that conversation from what i remember of it he really pressed him about like it was super obvious that this guy was deeply you know uh, wanted redemption for the the racist shit that he had done in the so past. So he did press him about. Yeah. He did. He definitely right. like pressed yeah. that issue more. I wish that I had done that. Uh, but that's about you know that's about it. I think that having a conversation with somebody who's an ex racist, like I don't even know why that would be controversial. That's you know? that's publicly admitted that he regrets being. Yeah, the way he but used I should have made him talk about it more because then people wouldn't be able to like use that as something to. Yeah, use like, against us yeah. for but having see, that but conversation. I, yeah, but know? here's the thing: it's like it's, it's, it, it, I'm just feeling like it's it's there's no like a lot of people say that you don't take accountability for some of the things you've done, right? But I think people and, want me to take accountability for things that I didn't do. 
or that or just are but not, not true. Things, but but things that things that you just aren't mindful, like you're just not being mindful of certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like everything that you're saying right now is, oh, I shouldn't have did it, so people can't use it to like you know paint me in this way. You know what I'm saying? Well, specifically when it comes people, to the Richard Spencer conversation, I right, think that, right, yeah. that that's what we're talking about. But how about the people that don't care about none of that, but just are just like just don't appreciate the fact that you didn't have their their like you know how they think and and what what you know where they stand how they, that you don't have that in mind um if somebody's stance is that they think because somebody used to be racist that sh- they should never be on a podcast it's I not just, that they I don't shouldn't have be any, on a podcast I don't, Adam. I don't care that's is that it's know. not that they shouldn't be on a podcast Adam is that they should be at least like the 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 integrity of it should be like now nah, we have to ask them about these things right, but that's because what the I just people said. because the people that are watching it are you know it, it, we we have to take that into consideration you feel me right that, but that's what I just said is that I wish that I had had that conversation so that those type of people would be would have their concerns uh, soothed a bit but if there's people who watch this channel who think you should never have an ex racist do a debate on the channel because. I don't know, like just because it's, we don't want to see have that. You should have debates. You're, you're missing my point here. You should have debates, Adam. But if you're going to debate, it has to be a debate where it's covering also the people that are watching, not just what you think is cool and what you like. You know what 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 you think is interesting, but also what other people, your viewership, right. like, and the people that also work here. You know what I'm saying? Because but they got families too. I don't and, think that. I don't think that. In a debate, you necessarily have to bring up every bad thing that the person ever did. But I wish that I did bring up more of it because then it at least would have appeased some of the people who felt like that's what they wanted to but see, see discussed. These words, bro, Adam, bro, these words, bro, like appease and making sure, like, oh, that I think they, you're missing out on the fact that I'm like really so. making sense here because. It does. He's like, saying the same shit that you I said. Am, if you're gonna just, host a debate, you don't kind of, have to ask the person about every bad thing that they ever did. But it's not. A, it's, it's like it's it's it's. But, but I do bro, wish that I had. But, but but what I'm saying is, yeah, you don't have to talk about everything, but you don't have to do shit. Honestly, you could do whatever you want. You could you might it's your platform. Right. So you could do whatever you want. But what I'm saying is taking into account the people that you have. Uh, that you have brought that that are invested into your your brand not just like you know if if a person watches a video or follows no jumper they're investing somewhat right they're investing into the brand right so now when 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 you have a debate like that and they're they a, a good half of your crowd they're what they would think about looking at a Richard Spence that's not addressed that is a problem a lot of people were undereducated on who he was, too. Right, but I also, like, you're you're kind of, like, pressing me to say something that I already said, which is that, yes, I wish I had acknowledged his past more. Right, and I, I'm, listen, Adam. He's saying even that not, your I'm, reason, I'm, I'm, China Mac's saying that the reason that you're saying that you're trying to veer off from, say, but he, I'm getting the same context from him though. Like right. y'all saying I, you're, the you're same saying thing, the same thing, but, you but it's just the way you're like, wording it. You're like, it's so, kind of like, you're saying, you're saying, so their needs would be soothed or they will be appeased or whatever. It's like, because these people actually care for me and I should have did it for these people. Like, that's what he, he's saying basically. Right. You're saying it like, it's he just the choice of the it. words, bro. Like, yeah, that's saying, what I said, but it's the it, same it context. Seems like though, it, it seems, it's yeah, the same no, context. A hundred percent. And I'm not, all I'm saying is that they should be taken into consideration, bro. And when you're making this content, you should be taking everybody's like, everybody's like, everybody's how they feel into consideration as all, uh, as well. Especially when you have somebody that said things like that towards black people, Latino people, Asian people, other people, you know what I'm saying? And the things that he said when he's coming on a platform where half of the, the, the viewership is black or minor, minorities, that should be addressed. And when it's not addressed, and when you say now, you already said, I should have done it. Yeah, I should but have it's just, addressed it. It, 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 it. It's just More. when you say, but... You when you say oh I should have addressed it but whatever 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 no, I'm not saying it. but I'm saying I should have addressed it because there is a percentage of the audience who probably would have wanted to hear me kind of grill him about certain racist things and I wish that 
I had done that just so that those people would have felt more satisfied with the conversation. That being said, I don't feel like I got almost any con- any like criticism about that podcast from the people that actually like watched it. It felt like it was more coming from people outside who kind of like heard about it and were like, and "Oh, then, yeah, right. Then, this gives, is yeah, something yeah, yeah, that yeah, we it, should." It gives address. a lot of room for people to say that to to push the narrative that you're racist, right? And I'm I not don't saying think anybody thinks I'm racist, yeah. bro. <laughs> d- trust me. Listen, there are people that think you are. You know what I'm saying? There are a lot of people that think you are. I don't yeah, hear that a lot. Well, you probably don't get you it. You know what I'm saying? But, it, but, but they, but they have you heard it? Yeah, they be in my DM going really? crazy. How, it's they, a lot they, of people. Listen, bro. But I, in China, well, I'm Mac, walking down the street it. and yeah. people are saying, yo, Adam is racist. For people sure. To you? I swear to God, bro. <laughs> hey, oh God. People, that's why. Like, hey, you have yeah. to understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think you're missing that. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's an issue. And, and it's something that you should address. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think you are. You know yeah, what I mean? The people but around you don't think you, you are. Even but know like you outside looking it. in. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, mean, like, I feel like I'm very intimately aware of the shit that people talk about me. And just like you are racist doesn't really like rise to the level of anything else that people are saying to it, me. It, it, like the people around you know that you ain't racist. Like right. We, right we, but then but I'm talking like, about the people yeah, who don't yeah, know yeah, me too. I'm talking people, about the, the comment yeah, section on posts and shit. The comment section, it might be a 30% that think you're racist or the people, the percentage of people that walked away. The, 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 do you the think they think I'm racist? Lost, yeah. Really? Yeah. Their family does. Yeah. I've been yeah, in their houses, bro. God. I've I been in their God. houses, bro. I'm telling you, man. I've I think seen you just interview clips like, with like a lot of the people who left where people like asked them if they thought I was racist and they said no. No, not man, the people. The but their people, families, like I'm the people is, behind them, you don't I'm, think I'm they're I'm talking about the fan. I was talking about the fans. He okay. was talking about the people that left for real. I was talking about the fans that walked away. Uh. Whatever percentage of fans that you lost over the breakup. They're pushing the racist narrative. Listen, hmm. I've been in people's He's families, in, like yeah, people that work here, right? And the conversations came up. And it was their family saying it. You because know what I'm saying? Because they don't know and you they like was, they people And they know was like, you. nah, nah, nah. But, you know, you don't think those constant phone calls and text messages, oh, taking screenshots of certain things that you said, or like the, the, that, that joke that that, uh, that, that, de- Destiny. that Destiny said to you, like just that one clip, boom, send it to them. Like, it's just, it doesn't seem like they're... Like the, the, those people are being taken in consideration when this content is. Well, being like I said, about. I wish that I had, you know, been on top of that a bit more in the Richard Spencer thing. Yeah, right. But I think it's other shit too. But like what? other than that, I, I'm just saying like the fact that people are pushing a narrative that you are underpaying people and all of that, and That's they don't wild. know. Listen, yeah. but they don't know the demographics of. They think that if you're on no jumper, you're making millions of dollars off of right. everything that they put out and. You you get what I'm saying? So they don't like trail getting 300 plus the support and cast. Mm. You got to get what I'm saying. Like all of that, they're not listening to that. They're just like, oh, he's probably making a hundred thousand every time that they get on. So now it's like they don't know yeah. like what YouTube pays out. They don't right. know what everything pays out to where Any you get what I'm saying. You so you you're racist because you have these black people who are a part of the culture who have agreed to work for this price. How and the, the fuck the joke, is that? And then, and then, but and, you get what I said. It goes both ways. How is that racist? Because the motherfucker signed the contract and they know what they got coming and they're coming to work. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And now they're saying, "Oh, he was underpaid." So now these people are like, "Oh yeah, he's racist. He's taking the black." But for the record, culture like, vulture. In that then, case, he ended up acknowledging that he didn't actually think no, he was underpaid. No, 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 you know, no, no. like very I'm saying, soon but after. But now, yeah. but no, negative narratives never leave. I, you can right. say that Adam has AIDS today. No, no, <laughs> no, no offense to the people with HIV. But like now everybody's viewing you, you, you like you're different and nobody's different with HIV or AIDS or whatever. But like, I bet you that every time that you fuck on a porn show, they like, damn, they, she fucking that A's dick. You think she really got it? Right. You get what I'm saying? And oh, it's not, shit. and I'm not, and you get what I'm saying? You can't take that away. Just like you calling somebody a snitch. You could call somebody a snitch and everybody start ganging up with you. And then when you put the paperwork out that he's not a snitch, it doesn't go viral. Mm-hmm. So now when motherfuckers hear like, yeah, ain't he a rat? Like you get what I'm saying? And it always stays with that person. You get what I'm saying? So People See, put these tags when they're 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 ignorant to the fact of what's going on at a workplace right. because they're only viewing it outside looking in. Do you view your like employees 
as like teammates or like just straight people that work for you? I mean, or is it both of those sound accurate? Right. They're teammates. They're people who work for me. Both right. seem fair. And 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 I could I could go for uh, him pushing for all of us to like unite and really be friends more than just be at work because he's mentioned it multiple times that we need to start taking trips together. We need to do this together. We need to just hang out, period. Like, you get what I'm saying? And that's because of what happened, right? Like, is do you feel like after that happened, you feel like you you, you making a couple changes? Well, one thing that's kind of under-discussed, I think, is the fact that, like, certain people left, and then all of a sudden there was no more drama on No Driver. You know, because it's like, and not, not to say that specific people were starting all of it or whatever, but there's definitely, like, certain dynamics on the channel and stuff that's one thing i like about what we have going now is that it seems like everybody's kind of on the same page i see but do you think you created the drama you helped create that drama not really like maybe a little bit maybe i clickbaited it or like the 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 person doing the thumbnails or whatever you know kind of clickbaited it but i don't think that i was you know if anything i think i was like really kind of pushing for people to stop doing a lot of that Mm. josh too yeah, Josh. Josh has definitely got some gray hairs over people fucking beefing on this channel. Right, because like people might think that you guys are just like telling everybody to do that. Like that's what you guys are like pushing. No, we never to do. have it like put, and, and because people think that that stuff benefits us more than it does. Right. Like, how much does that benefit? Let's talk about the, is that good for y'all or is that bad? Like the beef, or like well, all of the internal. Like to put it in perspective, on the news, there was there was times where like Almighty and. Uh, lush would be getting into it super like awkward arguments and shit like that like and then like realistically if i were to go look it's like what did that get us like one one clip that had like a hundred thousand views we're talking about like you know a couple hundred bucks it's like this is not even on my radar i would way rather everybody just be able to get along talk about topics because the reality is is that like building a business on good conversation is way better than building a business on like internal drama and conflict, which we because have more beef, than enough of that one beef, point. It's just not worth it. Beef draws a line in the sand. The people that's with the people that that they're beefing with, they're not they're no longer fucking with no jumper. If somebody on no jumper is beefing with somebody that's mm. a public figure that's everybody fuck with. Like if no jumper was beefing with young boy. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Right. Like you definitely you might get more fans coming to say that. Like, I, I heard that, Ax that say Foke, this. That he's I, better. But. I heard Ax say one time that, like, he doesn't want to publicly beef with people like me and Vlad because we're all kind of on the same level of fame and everybody who know, everyone who knows about Vlad probably knows about me and Ak and vice versa. But at, if, if Ak beefs with Nicki Minaj or Meek Mill, that could be really good for his career at a certain yeah, point because it's right. like you're beefing with somebody who's way bigger than you in a lot of ways in terms yeah. of followers and all that kind of shit. Yeah. If Nicki Minaj makes an Instagram video talking shit about academics, that's a good day for academics. For because sure. even if she's shitting on him, he's it's gonna still play put, off of it. It's, he, it he, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's putting him out there on a different level where yeah. he's, he's getting attention from a, 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 a huge whole star. Yeah. Now, zoom even smaller and look at like, you know, two hosts on the news beefing with each other. That's really not useful to anybody. It's like right. that's like you're gonna make a couple hundred extra dollars maybe on the clips channel that day. That's like it's not even relevant. It's like it's not and it's not worth it to have people walking around the office mad at each other and shit, you know? Right. And that's the difference that I've seen like over here now is kind of different. It's like now the team is more like a team and everybody's like really like, you know. Yeah. Is there's more camaraderie here in terms of just and it ain't not finna without the be no all. it ain't finna be none of that up here like yeah. you got different right. people up here that really have been through some shit so it's like if it's gonna be some shit it's gonna be some shit not saying that oh I walk around the building with my chest out but it's like rationally I'm cool with everybody up here so if I get up on a nigga just to tell him like hey bro why like and it's coming from a street nigga that really got beef right. with people it's like right. more respectable like. Yeah, that is. And I've seen that with you because you were trying to get Brick to talk shit about court on your stream. And we're talking about Brick Baby, who don't seem like he really holds his tongue and it has no problem saying something negative about somebody that you don't like or whatever. And I'm watching Brick Baby in that clip. 
and he's like really being as polite as possible yeah, while also like kind of acknowledging that maybe court could step it up or whatever but he was like so not trying to be a dick right. about it and not being like oh we getting into it we talking shit now yeah, yeah. Yeah. like i and i was very proud of you in that moment i'm like that is how we should handle right. shit yeah. you know no nah, yeah, I, I saw that too right? and I, it's yeah. like it's like <laughs> <laughs> What, what do you see? The, what's the future for No Jumper? Make good content. Like, build out the best team of hosts that we can. Make the, the content as, as good as possible continuously and just, you know, have have a good vibe. Make make everything as friendly as possible. Make everybody, like, feel tighter and more connected and shit, you know? But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the, the fans kind of decide, like, who the team is to a certain extent because if the fans are really fucking with somebody, then boom, you – you're good. And if they don't like somebody or don't want to watch something with somebody, then there's a bunch of people here who are like on camera. Maybe the fans don't fuck with them as much. I like them a lot as people, but they like, if the fans at a certain point don't want to see you on camera, then that shit gets complicated. But you know, the customers almost, almost correct. Customers always always right. right. That's a good point. I, 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 I got, um, another question before, you know, we start talking about Gunna. If we I, have I time yeah, to talk about yeah, Gunna, yeah, 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 <laughs> we yeah, might we have to do it. another yeah, one yeah, this week. Yeah, yeah nah, come on, we got. <laughs> no, no, we can nah, we can honestly we save it. Gunna though because I fucking did just have something open up in my my schedule for the next couple of days. Maybe I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Thursday. <laughs> so now, I, so now this is it's impossible for me not to ask this, right? And um, you know, I'm not gonna talk about like I, I I'm not gonna talk about whether you did it or not you know what i'm saying because there's no you haven't there's no charges it's just like you know it's nothing right um no charges you haven't been arrested for it it's your word and whoever else's word right so i'm gonna i have to take your word for it you know what i'm saying um however you did make a statement before and i just wanted to i've always really wanted to ask you like what you meant by that and kind of get your take and and reason on saying this, right? And it was like a a a like a tweet or something where you said if statutory rape is wrong, I don't want to be right. And that was just what I saw, right? That's very alarming for a lot of people. I did uh, want to be right. I didn't want to be right. Say the whole you got to say I, I, the so, whole quote. Say everything that was in right. the quote. To be fair, that was a joke that I wrote no, like no, no, no. almost we 20 years ago. Right. Uh, about the fact that, so, like, I'm just going to run it back for a little history lesson. There was a girl when I was 21 or 22. I, I forget the exact ages, but there was a girl I met online. She was fucking with me. She's hollering at me, yada, yada. And this was a girl who I was on this message board at the time, and she was, like, popping on the message board, always posting photos, whatever. And so I had a conversation with her. And at some point in the conversation, she acknowledges that she's 16, which she didn't think was a big deal because she's in Canada where that is the legal age. I tell her, I can't fuck with you. You know, yeah. like I'm I'm early 20s, whatever. Already at that point, I'm like, nah, I, I, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I shouldn't even been talking to you. I didn't know. So then we didn't talk for three years. And then all of a sudden, one day she's 19 and we end up having a conversation again. And I ended up hanging out with her and we were actually dating for like a couple months at that time. And that was it. And so when I wrote about the original. That was after. Yeah, like three years after we had this conversation where I realized that she was 16. That was like a brief conversation. Like three years later, I realized, or or three years later, we like get back tapped in and now she's of age and everything and she wants to hang out. So we ended up hanging out. And so that that comment was like a joke I made about the fact that when I had spoken to her earlier, I thought she was good looking or whatever. Right, but that joke was, it can be taken out of context. But the joke, the joke also had more context to it though. Right. All the it jokes, it was a joke right. about right. not doing. No, it. you were like, you were like, she looked. She, she said she was. She looked like she was eighteen or nineteen. Some something something. For sure, she I was like, she was grown, so yeah. if statutory rape was something, I didn't want to be right in right. that situation. Meaning that she looked good and she looked of age, but I stepped back. But and like, that's a crazy shit. Is that, I didn't it also, want to be but right. it also like, could come across damn. like, oh, you know that 
fuck it. If if it's wrong, then she looks so good. No, but I that but that anyway. wasn't the joke I was making at all. I was making the joke after the fact about the fact that I had had that conversation with her earlier, even though in that conversation I did the right thing, right? Like yeah. if if you ended up in that situation in your early twenties where you accidentally ended up hopping on the phone call with a girl who was underage and then you found out what's the right thing to do the right thing to do shut is just it down shut it down hey i'm sorry uh, you know maybe i'll see you later in life <laughs> which is exactly what happened and but people like love to use that now granted again we're talking about something that was literally 17 years ago people love to like point at that and be like oh you you fuck with young kids or whatever even though in that situation i did the right thing like after the initial error of getting on the phone with her i ceased communication with her for a long time but now all these years later people decided that they want to use like a new word that i don't think even existed at the time and be like oh well you groomed her i'm so, like i didn't even speak to her for so, like three and a half years after that and you now want to say that i gr it's just i crazy. hate to say i hate to even do this but so the Kylie Tiger thing, just not a thing. Like, that wasn't a problem and, at all. And you know what's crazy is that there's so many people in the rap game that I'm not going to throw under the bus, but I know for yeah. a fact there's a lot of people who were actually fucking underage girls for sure that nobody ever talks about. But then the fact that I spoke to one one time on the phone and then ended up hanging out with her all these years later, people want to, like, treat that as if I really did something fucked up, even though that girl... When she gave her statement to the media or whatever, she never said that I was fucking hanging out with her when she was underage. I never even met her until she was 19. So, I mean, I feel like people are kind of disingenuous with that yeah, shit, I even feel. though I do deserve some shit for having, like, made oh, inappropriate man. jokes and all that stuff. I, you know, that was a bad joke. Yeah, but that. it was a joke. It's not like something I did, you know? Right, right. Yeah, I mean... And it was on... What, what, was it an interview or just you no, on Twitter? It, it was an old ass blog. This was before, way before Twitter even existed. Because yeah, we're I've talking read. like 2003, 2004, yeah. or shit like that, oh, you know? Shit. Was it a blog uh, spot? Nah, it was just maybe, actually. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That was, that's I the blog spot. I guess I really... it might have been hosted as, as a blog spot, but I forget. Yeah. Anything I mean, else, China Mac? <laughs> yeah. So, and, that, and it, like, like, I got a daughter. So a joke is a you joke. You got a daughter. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A joke is a joke. You got two daughters. A joke is a joke, but there's some shit. Yeah. You just can't drugs. joke but about it. But that was a long time ago. You got to right. think he was yeah. still young yes. and yeah, still but doing it's new drugs to some people, and all you know type of saying? shit. Yeah, like, because cause uh, a lot of people never even seen it before until yeah, somebody make yeah. a post. Or, and then and it's like, like in the situation, look, in the situation, he did not touch. He didn't even go meet up with the minor. Right. Like, it's people that really out here going crazy at people like like he said like it's just like come on man they just take it like all this shit hidden at one time and then they throw this in exactly like, why yeah. not dig this up we all go through this shit yeah every we all day. it's being successful from where you from it comes it comes a gang right. of bullshit like, i mean it happens to all of us it happens to me all the time you know what i'm saying like yeah. he used to shoot left-handed and nigga <laughs> ain't no righty like, at the end of the day, it doesn't. They, and, they and come up with bullshit. The, and you know what's important to remember, too, is that all that shit originally came out 2018. So everything that happened with No Jumper in terms of it becoming a big deal or becoming popular or whatever, 90% or 80% of everything that I've done with No Jumper has been under the guise of people knowing about that shit. And it just like came out again this year at a moment where I was already clearly having a hard time where a bunch of the hosts left and like the brand seemed to be in the state of turmoil and people decided like, ah, this is the time. Boom. Let's put that's what the Internet this. does. When you're yeah. going through some shit, they throw the whole sink at you. But you I think know people saying? like also just forget how wild the Internet was because people don't actually forget. You hear people talk about how crazy Twitter was in 2010, 2012, 2013, whatever, like Twitter used to be like a fucking contest to see who could make the most <laughs> offensive joke. Yeah. And there's Winning. so yeah. many yeah. people when you go back yeah. on Twitter and I see tweets from people and I'm just like, oh my God, I, I cannot believe, believe that Twitter. person said it. <laughs> so <laughs> when I think about it in that context, I'm like not that surprised that I used to make fucking super edgy, controversial jokes because, you know, there's all kinds of jokes that we'll make off camera that we think are funny as yeah. fuck. But we also, yeah. we all know what world we live in. So we all won't, make those kind of jokes and nobody thinks that they're gonna blow up 
to be whoever they're going to be at a young age. They're still finding themselves. So it's like if I'm making jokes with my inner circle, like it's what, how many followers did you have at the time anyway? Like, Oh, like none. Yeah, that was the BMX days when yeah. I had like a thousand followers. And I'm, I'm like, like Twitter this, felt like a group chat with everybody. me and the homies. That's what I was about to you say. Know? You know everybody that's following you. So y'all just talking shit all night. That's why Donnie, are you I feel like they got all that shit from King Von. Oh, yeah. Shit. I'm, I'm texting her right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we good. Yeah. Sorry. Right. So. We got to do some porno soon here. Yeah. We're going a little long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. It's all good. I mean, I'm. Uh, you addressed what you had to I address. I mean, I, that, I mean that's why questions. you have been popping up with. I mean, because I, I mean, said that I, I said, listen, I when when I seen the house phone thing, I said that is I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't support no jumper because it just looked like, damn, bro, like, damn, if if it's like that, then nobody's safe. But you know what I'm saying? But when you did your homework. Did you feel? Could you? Could you? I feel mean, talking both to sides? him, talking to him is 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 the ultimate homework, right? Like, yeah. Because he just says some things that, you know, I mean, it just didn't look like it looked like you already knew. It looked like you, you know, what I'm saying, like yeah. it looked like you had all of this, yeah. this information, and you still did it, yeah. and it was just like, damn, like you just yeah. threw him straight under the bus. You know what I'm saying? And who wants to support something that, you know? That that no, that would that, do something like yeah. that to their people. I mean, nah, that was the last thing I wanted to happen. And I've you know, I've had this conversation with the house phone. I feel like he gets it at this point. It's just like, you know, this it was never in, intended to be some shit where I was gonna get at him or anything, you know. It wasn't at all like that. Like I, yeah. I, I really care about that dude. And even if we're not like as close right now as we used to be or whatever, it's like, you know, I never I think a lot of people just wanna know if you care, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, at least me. I don't yeah. I, I just speak for myself. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to know, damn, did Adam even really care about people? Like did he really even you know what I'm saying? Like like like, you know? And that was my question. And that's mm. why I came with with all of this because when I saw it, it just seemed like, damn, Adam don't even care about them. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and at the end of the day, it's like, we all make content. You feel me? Like, you know, of course, I didn't reach your level if, of content, but I make my own content. And every time I do the content, I try to keep, I, I try to keep an integrity. You know what I'm saying? I try, I try to keep, I, 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 it's, it's important to me. You know what I'm saying? For me to keep the integrity and whoever that I'm showcasing, whoever I'm working with, it's important for me to protect their, to, best, to protect their yeah. best interests as well. Or else it's like, yeah. damn, like I'm just like fucking uh, 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 using you. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's never what I want to do. If anything, we use each other and we grow to, together. But I would never do. I would never do it in a way where it's is is beneficial for me and not beneficial for you. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I carry it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something that. Is important to me, you know what I'm saying. Regardless mm. what other people do, regardless of what they've been done, to whoever did anything to them or whatever, regardless of all of that, is something that is important to me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, um, like when I think about somebody like Brick and the relationship that we're building, it's like, what what do I actually want to do in our relationship? And I honestly feel like it's the same as all the other guys who ended up leaving or whatever. Which is, I want to make content together. I want to blow you up in the process, shout you out, try to get you opportunities, try to put you in position to be able to do shit that's bigger than what you've done before. And I definitely don't want to bring any kind of negativity or stress into your life at all, you know? And it's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to, like, like that's how I've always been with anybody who's under the brand. Like, anybody who I even just kick it with, like, just my little homie that is just hanging out. I'm going to shout you out 500 fucking times on my story. I'm going to, you know, try to line up shit for you. There's people. A, it, there's it people. has been like that for years with him. I've yeah. been knowing him for years. And it's like, like, we didn't get time to kick it because right when we were connected, I went to jail. But he was with my closest homeboy the whole time. So when I'm calling, it's like Adam gives a fuck. He's like, yeah, me, what us? Party animal, dude, he's changed. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you know I mean, like, so... For a motherfucker, to, when he gets on camera, he doesn't act the same as when he's having fun everywhere. So people don't get that because he knows how to be professional. That's why so I need to be on the block more. And yeah, just that's what I'm about to up with the guys, he Definitely you know? tried to pop out and all that again. So. <laughs> I've just been a little too because that is the weird thing for me is like this balance of your life. Like, all right, when I started No Jumper, it was me 
outside. All those fucking interviews that I got early on was because I would go to shows. I remember I went to two or three 21 Savage shows in a weekend just trying to get a conversation with him because I wanted to interview him and I was talking to his manager and stuff. And after three 21 Savage shows, I never got a conversation with him throughout the course of that weekend because <laughs> he was moving around hella militant. You know, I'm yeah. like standing by the side of the stage backstage just trying to like meet him and get a little FaceTime because that worked for me over and over and over where yeah. I would be at the party or I would be at the lot. show. Yeah, because he was moving on some yeah. super gangster shit yeah, even back yeah, then. Yeah. But, you know, like all those interviews I got early on was because I was actually really outside and every fucking day was focused on how to meet people, how to get into the right places, whatever. And now I look at my life, it's like, Oh, I come to the office. I'm here for like, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day. And then I go home and I do my dad shit. And, yeah, but you know, that that's like I'm in a different place now, but I got to try to like change up the ratio a little bit more to like spend more time out with the people and being outside doing like shit you, because uh, I just first. haven't I've, I've been too cooped up in the and, and COVID fucked up shit, too, in the sense for of sure. like all of just a sudden it's just day training like, you, yeah, you're more house oriented. Everybody yeah. is now It's like. Outside, but I look at Dub and I'm like, God, he's like, he's like living my previous life. He's yeah, literally yeah, got my old store yeah. and he's outside kicking it with people all day, every day, and yeah. and just like really tapping in with his fans constantly. And as a result, his brand is super fucking strong. Yeah. They're not necessarily like huge on social media, yeah, but, but he's around street, his like, people what? every day and he's tapping in with rappers every day. And like, I, I miss that part of my life, you know. Yeah. And and especially as my kid gets older. And I start to realize, like, oh, there's going to be a time period where your kid is in school eight hours a fucking day and you still need to, like, have the fucking business or be an actual person. Because in the early stages of my kid's life, especially because of COVID, it's like I was just trying to be around her as much as possible. And as soon as even, – even here, like, there was a couple of days last week where we're, like, I get done my interviews and stuff and it's, like, 6 o'clock and I stuck around the office till 8.30 or 9 just talking to the guys who work here and shit – about like, well, how do you feel about how this person's doing, or how do you feel about this content, and how, like, what, what should we do for this shit, whatever? And there's been so many times where I got done my interviews at six, boom, I'm out the door because I just want to get like an hour of time in with my kid before bed, you know? And it's like I I need, and I'm telling my girl like, yo, I'm not gonna be home every single night to put her to sleep with you, but it's because. I know that I need to go harder and be a bigger part of the team and like really around the guys and stuff if yeah. I'm gonna keep this shit going. So I, I, I realize that there's things that I kind of regret. It's hard to be everything to everybody. And even like, you know, just being outside, like even just going to the club or whatever, like probably my relationship with A D and T Rell and all of them would have been better if I if because there was plenty of times where they were going out to the club or whatever and I'm just like, hell no, I ain't going out doing <laughs> that shit. Which yeah. I don't wanna be out until two in the morning. Yeah. Because I'm waking up with my kid at six, at in, the six morning, in the morning, you know, and yeah. it's it's hard to burn the candle right on both now. ends, you did know. You, did I you look it. at AD as a real friend? Yeah, maybe like at at times it felt like more of friends, but you know, I, I we weren't like best friends, you know. Like before he started working here, I was only ever around him like a couple of times. Right, but then it turned into a, a friendship. Yeah, but like then as genuine... time went by, it felt like it kind of turned into more like, oh, we're we're just kind of doing content together. What you do know? you think? Because that's the same thing you said about. House exactly. Home, right? So yeah. what do you think what do you think did that? I mean, with the house phone thing, I think it just I'm, it yeah. was just our lives became so different. Where all of a sudden if I'm spending every moment at the crib with the baby and stuff, instead of being in the streets or going to parties or going to shows or whatever, it's kind of hard once you're not on the same page or whatever. And even with AD, like when did I feel like we were really close friends? Probably mostly during COVID because all the shit he had going on grinded to a halt where like he was in the office like eight fucking hours a day yeah. because he didn't have anything else going on because yeah. everything else got shut down because of COVID. That's yeah. when it felt like we were kind of more really tapped in. And then like, you know, time goes by. But then once he really started focusing on his platform and shit, that's when it kind of started to be like some amount of stress because at a certain point I started to feel like, okay, you guys are doing this podcast on Wednesday but it's like way less interesting than what you're doing on your own platforms. You know, mm -hmm. like you guys are yeah. doing the good shit on your channels yeah. and, and then you're kind of just chilling. Just coming to work. Yeah. And that's yeah, what was killing yeah, me is yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm reading comments or getting DMs like, bro, these dudes are just talking about their YouTube channels on but, your podcast. And I'm kind of like, yeah, that's this is only going to last so long. Did you see when he first started his uh, podcast? Because I, I think he said that you pushed him to do it. Well, yeah, but it was kind of like, 
I thought he was going to, like, play games or, like – because I remember telling him, like, you could be, like, academics, but, like, not as messy. You know, yeah. like, you talk about your stories, your life, et cetera. When it started to become stressful, though, was when it started to feel like, oh, there's, like, problems between people that are popping up on the channel – and then you guys are kind of like rushing home to make content on your channels right. about the shit that was happening here, which is something I'm super like on alert for is like, I just, you know, that, that creates this really weird dynamic basically, mm. which yeah. I, I can't really hold it against them either because that's like them brand new to making content. Right. So they're not like, you know, they don't even have that many reference points to look at, to be like, Oh, like maybe this is bad or this is not going to turn out well or whatever. Like I don't hold anything against did, them. Did they ever ask, out. Was there ever a conversation for them to put that show here or, like, for for them to do that here? No, not really. Uh, In retrospect, that probably would have been a good conversation to have, but, like I said because this before. Because it made it seem like, it made it seem like, um, I don't know what, but it kind of, I, I, it seemed like they asked you, like, brought, brought it to your attention and you kind of didn't see the potential in it. No. And you was like... We never had conversations about bringing back on figure community to No Jumper, you know? Mm. And I, I remember t Rail saying in, like, an interview or something that he, he thought that one point when he started it that I was going to hit him up and be like, yo, let's bring that to No Jumper. But the reality is, is that, you know, he's got his own YouTube channel. No Jumper is mostly a YouTube channel. How was I going to offer him more money than he was already making? Mm. I don't really like know how that would have worked. Like, you know, because I, like, if you, like, because a lot of times people see people getting signed to these big deals now and you hear about so and so got signed for a hundred million dollars to sign with Kick or whatever it is. And it's like, that shit is dope. But you know what that is? That's a huge company that has a fuckload of money that is willing to say, okay, this, this person might make us 20 million, but we're going to give them a hundred million just to make our platform lit. And make so that, like, you know, thousands of other streamers want to come and stream for free on this platform, you know? When I looked at the Bag and Fig thing, like, as much as that would have been dope as fuck to be like, oh, look at this platform that's, like, under the No Jumper umbrella, I don't know how it could have made it make sense made for him money-wise. Especially because this is a business that, like, we have no funding. Like, all the money that we have is just the money that we made from doing this content over the years or whatever, you know? So, I don't know. I mean... It just, it, it probably just wouldn't have worked out. But maybe I should, we should have had the conversation at least because we never had the conversation. Do you feel like AD was a, a genuine friend to you at one point? Like him towards you, like he looked. Yeah. Hmm. And, and still, I feel like we're cool. You know, we had a conversation like right before the wedding where he hit me up saying, uh, congratulations and all that shit. I feel like maybe even as time goes by, I'll probably be like yeah. more time chill. Time heals wounds. Yeah. Like what, 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 shit, what, sure. Would you have done anything? I got nothing against him. You know? Would you have yeah. done anything different in that, in that whole ordeal? I mean, I think we should have just, in general, just been more transparent and had more conversations and really, I don't know if it would have necessarily changed the way that things ended up working out, you know, but definitely I like, especially like what I was just saying with like not smoking weed and shit now, I just feel like I see the the communication that I need to have with people better and I just want to like do more of that and like just not just be kind of like sleepwalking through my life. Where I'm just not having the important conversations. If I'm mad at Brick Baby about something, I want to holler at him and like really hash it out rather than like being kind of pissed off for like a month or two and just not bringing it yeah, up because yeah. that's that's normal shit. People do yeah. that. People fall that's out over that all the do. time. Yeah. It's just with me, it's like it's gonna play out on a when bigger you, stage. When you hold on to that shit. It, it, you building like a bigger beef in your head because whatever you're mad at is still you going on because you it. never you never addressed it so mm. that person might still be doing that every day you never said nothing about it but it's pissing you off to same the, thing with my girl you like you know your girl will have a habit or do something that you don't like and if you don't bring it up that shit's just gonna build up in your mind over time and we've all she seen it happen think you know? it's a problem and especially when you're like me where i'm oh I'm, I'm coming home and i'm playing poker and smoking weed and just trying to kind of like avoid all the responsibilities that i probably should be focused on at a certain point i think that's been a real error for me at times i think you know yeah all right i gotta go do uh, uh sex uh, stuff uh, tbh huh. so uh yeah let's yeah uh, let's tap uh, in again soon yeah, I gotta do, do sex stuff too. <laughs> yeah, you gonna jerk off in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I jerk off here all the time. You have tinted windows and go jerk off in the whip, right? In your office. <laughs> Where's the best parking lot around here to go jerk off in? Josh? Airport. Crazy.
He, he said the airport. He he be off. I need to know. <laughs> Now he got All a truck. All the fucking airport that, drivers. See, yeah, that's the problem. Tired. I got the low ass car, so it's like if I'm beating off, it's kind of like everybody can see it. Josh is up high, so if he could be like whipping his shit around, and I don't got night. a car. You can jerk off <laughs> in the Uber. Nah, he, <laughs> no, he doing that shit in the, uh, in the bathroom. That's uh, what, you guys know any? That shit in the that's illegal. Office. Are there any cool that's bushes illegal. around here or anything yeah. that you could go beat off? Yeah. I don't know. It's summertime. You will get stung in your ass. The bugs back out now. Hey, so are you done shooting your movie? So you're not gonna be gone every weekend? Yeah. I'm back. Okay. I'm back oh, finally. The movie wrap this week. Right. What's the name and of the movie? Shout out. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah, the name props, of it. Man. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say it yet, but oh well, no. Biggest boss. Be looking out for biggest hey. boss. Boss baby. Yeah, you already know. <laughs> but yeah, man. The movie thing, it, it I I salute all you actors that go to work and especially the underpaid actors that go to work from nine to five because <laughs> That shit is stressful, man. But yeah, definitely tap in and shout out the podcast because I feel like that's where I got uh, casted from. Cause oh, I never, for real? I never went on an audition. Oh, that's dope. They was like, we want to break, baby. And you got the lead role? Yeah. Never been on, oh, shit. But he's playing a trapper. He's barely yeah, acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, what the fuck? It was some regular shit. Yeah. Good show. Hey, thank you to China Mag for coming through, giving us a little bit of you know spiciness. I'm excited to read the comments on this one for show. Shout out to Big Dashiki over here. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, you know, one time a, a, a an African fan gave me a dashiki. Oh, and did I, you wear it? I, I I put it on just to take a photo for private use, just just to confirm yeah, that I looked like an looked asshole. Like yeah. <laughs> but I remember, I, I think I I just took it from him. But I remember thinking in my head like, this is not a good. Don't even say yeah, 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 the yeah. right it's, way. I'm yeah. not. Nah, the shiki, da shiki, I gotta yeah. emphasize it a little yeah. more. Nah, yeah, yeah, you know that's right. like ghetto shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you said like a white person saying a black name. Yeah, Deshaun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Appreciate y'all. Much love. Hey.